What's up, everybody? This is Johnny Basement, and we're back here in the basement for. Hold on, I'm gonna do it over. Guys, <laughs> let me see something if I'm on right now. I don't even know it because something just screwed up. Basement technical difficulties, as usual. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. Let me see what we got here, guys. Let me see what we got. Rangers just started the game right now. You guys already know. You already know. You already guys, know you that we are not, that we are not an easy win here because the Rangers and the Knicks, what do we like to do? We like to play down to our opponents. Brunson, 61 points last night, and we still lose, still lose to a cellar-dweller team like the San Antonio Spurs. 61 points by Brunson is wasted, wasted. Typical New York sports thing to do. I don't care what team it is. We always, 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 always drop one to the bad teams. The New York Rangers sweep the Boston Bruins the whole series. We sweep them. But yet we can't beat the Columbus Blue Jackets, who are a doormat. We dropped two out of three to them this season, I think. At least two out of three. It's crazy, but it's true. I don't know why New York teams do this, but we do. It's something that we like to do. I don't get it, man. I just don't get it. What an incredible game last night by the Knicks just to blow it. I mean, I don't, I just don't get it. When we the Knicks, uh, the Knicks, when the Rangers had a chance of becoming the first team in franchise history to win 11 straight games. We lose to the Blue Jackets. I mean, come on. Come on. You can't make this stuff up. I don't get it. I don't understand what we do. So tonight, tonight what do we do? Jonathan Quick is tied with Ryan Miller right now as the all-time American winning his goalie. The Rangers should be doing this man a favor who has found his game, absolutely found his game with the Rangers this year. Absolutely found his game. They He deserves to get a win. They deserve to give him a win tonight. Help this man out. Don't lose to the Coyotes. The Coyotes have dropped five of their last 25. They've won five out of their last 25. Won five. Rocco wants to say hello to everybody. He's super hyper tonight. Ready for this Jonathan Quick win. Rocco's saying hello, saying what's up. That's what's happening. So, hoping you guys are all good, man. Hoping everything is going well. And... It has been a minute, so bear with me here. Bear with me. Um, it's been a minute, guys, since I've been on, so just bear with me. I'm I'm kind of doing it on the fly. You guys should know, based on technical difficulties. Here we go. Here we go. Gunner, OG seller dweller first. Dweller accounted for. What's happening, Gunner? What's happening, man? At least you already locked the playoff spot. Yeah, no doubt. Did you know that, Gunner, tonight? Uh, Jonathan Quick is tied with Ryan Miller for the winningest American goalies, 391 apiece. Quick wins tonight. He's sold. Uh, he's solely by himself, if that makes sense, solely on his own. So two incredible goalies, Jonathan Quick and Ryan Miller. Quick, everybody said he was dead in the water the last two years. He hasn't been doing it, and here we are. Here we are. He's doing it. Let's see what he can pull out this year, man. This is exciting. And they should win. Again, it's a New York team playing a bad team, a really bad team. Again, Arizona's only won five out of their last 25 games. But here comes New York. Remember, our 10-game winning streak. Here comes New York against Columbus. Should get that franchise record, 11 straight. Nope. And I told you guys they weren't going to win that game. I told you. It's weird. Every New York team does it, man. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Corey, what's going on? Corey, what's happening, man? Great to see you in here, man. Quick, another seller dweller accounted for. Corey, uh, what's good, Quick? Good to see your name in here, man. Corey, the Mets already got me super depressed, and it's only two games. I know, man. You guys know I'm a diehard Yankee fan, but I really do like the Mets. I've said it a hundred times. The Mets are my second favorite team. Corey. One hit yesterday. One hit. And I know about today. One hit. What is that? And Cohen, 
Cohen has got to be kidding people when he said he expects the Mets to make the playoffs this year. He's kidding, right? He's kidding. I thought when Cohen took over the team, the whole mantra was the Mets were going to be the team to beat, man. Bring in Lindor. Yeah, they went after Scherzer and Verlander. You expected them to, you know, kind of like what the Jets are doing now. Just went all in on these players to win. Got Buckle Showalter, who, by the way, I still don't agree with his firing. Still don't agree. Not fully. I mean, not fully, because can you really blame them when you get rid of half the team? I, and then you don't make any additions. You don't make any additions. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. I really don't. But uh, it's only two games, Corey. It's only two games. I know it's depressing. You don't want to see that. At least, at least get one and one, right? At least get one and one. But hey, listen to me. When the Yankees were down four nothing in the first game against Houston of all teams, I'm like, come on. And I know Nesta Cortez is not supposed to be the opening day starter. There's a lot of pressure on him. He went out of his normal rotation, which for pitchers isn't easy. People think, oh, he's, anybody can start opening day. Marcus Stroman said no, because it's taking him out of his spring training rotational mode. So then you got to make changes to make that kind of start. And you're coming out of the spring. This isn't the playoffs where you're already warmed up and ready to go. It's not. So it was an easy thing for Cortez, but they came back and won. Soto's been a dream. It's been incredible to have him on the team. And the only thing that sucks is like, Will they sign him next year or not? I don't know, but it's just going to be an ongoing thing all season. Can we enjoy having them for a season with all this talk and speculation? Forget all the speculation. That's all it is. Remember Yamamoto? He was going to be a – how about Yamamoto's first start, huh? Wow. He got shellacked. Anyway, speculation is crazy because, remember, Yamamoto was going to be a Yankee. He was definitely in the lead to be a Yankee. Oh, Blake Snell. He's going to end up being a Yankee. Like, it's all it is is rumors, speculation. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's crazy, but nobody knows. It's all BS and sources say and all this garbage, man. It really, it's crazy, isn't it? And, and, and everybody buys into this stuff. That's why you guys know me. I'm not a big uh, NFL draft guy. I'm just not. I'm not a big draft guy. How can someone tell me, meaning the media, Oh, such and such team won the draft. You see the picks they got? Well, they won the draft. How do you know they won the draft until these guys actually play? I, I'm a little old school with this stuff. Not a big combine guy running in a straight line with no pads and no pressure. And throw. Look at Zach Wilson at the combine. And I don't think Zach Wilson's all that bad, guys. I really don't. He bad, played behind a bad line. I think where Zach screwed up is he was immature his first two years. Extremely immature. And the New York media is going to pound on him. He didn't play badly totally this whole season. Watch, if he ends up on the right team with the right coaching, I think he's going to be pretty decent. I know people laugh at me when I tell me that, but I'm telling you, I think he's going to be pretty decent. What I think is 0-0 here, 1334 left in the first period. Uh, Frank! Frank! My man, Frank. Everybody knows Frank, the OG cellar dweller. From the sports memorabilia store, my man, my man, it's been a long time, but I'm back to talk sports. Frank is in the basement. Good to see you in here, Frank. Good to see you in here, man. Wow. Makes my day, Frank. I hope you're doing well. I hope your health is doing well, man. Good to see you in here. Quick facts. New York team always lose the bad. It's so true, dude. It's so true. Severino is washed. I know, Corey, that hurts my heart. It, it hurts my heart because I really pulled for Severino. I, But the Yankees had to get rid of him, man. I don't blame the Mets for taking a chance, but, dude, his games last year, I they were bad. He was getting bombed, man. He wasn't lasting long. He was just getting bombed. So I, and I like Severino, so I don't want to sound like I'm ripping on him. I'm just talking about his play. His play was just not there, man. I, Corey, uh, I still hope Severino comes through, man. I know. I know. It hurts my heart because he was original Yankee. He pitched really well for a while, but he always gets hurt, man. The guy gets hurt. And I mean, 60-day IL hurt, monumental injuries. It's it's insane, man, but it's true. I know. I know. He's watched. I can't even, I can't even argue that, uh, Corey. Frank, doing much bella, uh, better. Philly seem to love to give up hits and runs. I Yeah. Hey, man, it's early in the season, right? It's early in the season. Hey, 
Hassan Reddick on the Jets. Wow, what a pickup for the Jets. And guys, Eagle fans act like Bryce Huff is no good. Uh, Bryce Huff is a monster, man. <clears throat> Comparing their guys what the sports media is doing. Well, look at the sacks that Huff had the last four years compared to Reddick. Well, Huff wasn't an everyday, every down starter. He wasn't an every down starter. He played a hell of a lot more this past year, had the highest quarterback pressure rating, and had 10 sacks. The guy's a beast off the edge. Can we say he's better than Reddick? I don't know. But he's no Eagles didn't pick up any scrub, Frank. They didn't pick up any scrub. Bryce Huff is a Bryce Huff is something to deal with, man. He's very quick off the ball. He's not good on the run defense. He's just a straight pass rusher. I like Bryce Huff, but man, I'll take the Reddick pickup. Wow. I didn't see that coming. So I really thought Clowney was going to go to the Jets. Or the Ravens, but he chose the Panthers. That was really weird at his stage in his career. I mean, I understand he lived, that's his hometown. He has charities and other things going on. But he was talking about wanting to win a ring at this stage of his career. Well, he ain't getting it in, in Carolina. I mean, not saying the Jets are going to get it, but you have a better shot with the Ravens or the Jets than you do with Carolina. So, whatever. Money talks. Um, Huff is going to make a big difference. That Oh, yeah. Bryce... Uh, I hated the Jets giving him up, but they had to. People said, well, if he was any good, the Jets would have signed him. Not true. The Jets needed to uh, address their horrendous offensive line, and they needed more than just Garrett Wilson at wide receiver. They needed to address these positions. They didn't have a whole lot of cap room. You can't dump it all into a huff. The defense, of all things on the Jets, the defense could take the hit. The defense could take the hit of losing one guy. That defense is great monstrous they could take the hit of missing one guy of huff and picking up somebody else so i understood it somebody had to sacrifice they had to sacrifice somebody got a great deal from the eagles i hope he does very well for you guys uh i still pull for players that start with my teams and they go to other teams just like i was telling Corey, i still hope severino finds his game i i really do um Sam Darnold, I'm pulling for him. I can't believe they're making him the st shot on net. 10.30 left in the first period. Still 0-0. The Rangers really need to win this game. Like, like, give me a break. Come on, they really need to win this game. I, the Rangers have, I mean, if they don't win the cup this year, man, I don't know what they need to do. I really don't know what they need to do. You got the right. Look at how much the coaching difference makes. It, make, it makes. They fired Gerard Gallant. They fired Gallant, 56 games, roughly 56 games over 500 as a, as a coach after two years, and they fired him. Wasn't doing it. That's what you do. You get rid of it when you see changes not happening. He wasn't very good at in-game transitions, in-game coaching, in-game changes. Peter Laviolette, look at this with the same. What did he do? He broke that kid line up right away. Broke that kid line up. Look at Lafayette this year. Look at Lafayette this year. All the range of fans, oh, this guy's no good. Get rid of him. We don't need this kid. He can't score. Gallant never made these changes. He thought that kid line was like, listen, as a range of fan, we all loved the kid line in the beginning. But when it wasn't working, he didn't go away from it. Laviolette comes in, breaks that whole thing up. Look at Lafayette now. Got over 20 goals this season. Four Rangers on the power player and double-digit goals. Four. They're the only team in the NHL to have that. Tell you, coaching makes a big difference, man. The guy's been to three Stanley Cups as a coach. Won one with the Hurricanes in 06. Then he took the Flyers and lost to who? Patrick Kane and the uh, and the Dynasty uh, Blackhawks. No shame in that. Then he took the Nashville Predators, the Predators, to the Stanley Cup and lost to who? Crosby and company. What's the shame? This guy knows winning. He knows how to play teams. He knows how to play veterans, where to put people where, knows how to make in-game changes. Look at Chris Drury, the GM. He signed Jonathan Quick to next year already. Doesn't even let him hit free agency. The guy's playing great. Loves being a Ranger. It was a Ranger fan growing up. What does he do? Signs him already for next year. Doesn't wait for him to hit free agency. Signed him now. Perfect backup. That's how you do it. Yankees don't do that. Aaron Boone stays around forever. Don't make these moves. Don't make moves, man. You see something's not working. You can't, oh, you know, most 
people wouldn't have fired Gerard Gallant. I think he's a good coach, but he ain't Laviolette. I said that at the start of the season. I said it before they hired him. I wanted Laviolette over anybody else that was out there. Uh, Frank, where did I leave off? Frank, Frank, Frank. <laughs> Jets are going to be pretty damn yeah, They are. Listen, the media is funny to me because a lot of them say, well, the Jets, Vegas has them at nine and a half wins. A lot of people say, well, we don't really see that. I'm telling you, there's a few talking heads out there on Fox and ESPN and all of them talking about how the Jets just really aren't. Now, listen, to be fair, bad decisions, historically bad trades, can't develop quarterbacks. Listen, the Jets have plenty to mock, plenty. But they're talking about a healthy Jets team. A lot of them can't see them winning over nine games. The Jets won seven with four different quarterbacks and a bad O-line. Reese Hall had 994 yards rushing and 76 catches, by the way, with four different quarterbacks in a bad line. Garrett Wilson, for the second year in a row, playing with four different quarterbacks in a bad O-line, being the only threat at wide receiver, getting double covered, still got over 1,000 yards for the second year in a row. So now, if you have a healthy Aaron Rodgers, now you have Mike Williams, now you have Tyron Smith, uh, Morgan Moses, John Simpson, you rebuilt the whole line. Now you got Hassan Reddick on defense. The defense is already monsters, and they can't win. They won seven games with that disaster they had going this year, including the play calling. A healthy Jets team can't compete. This is what I'm hearing. You can look it up on a lot of these guys. They can't compete with Cincinnati, Buffalo, or Houston. Well, the seven-win team with all these problems pounded the Texans last year 30-7. to seven. They split with Buffalo, and they didn't play Cincinnati. They can't compete with them? Listen, man, history of the Jets is a joke. I get it. Injuries happen with them. But listen, if any other team picked up these kind of players and had this kind of team in any other city, they'd be they'd be contenders. They'd be this. But that's fine. Like Brees Hall said, let them all mock us. Let them all make jokes. Let them do all that. Let them talk now. Because this year, I'm glad. There's no hard knocks. There's no hype around the Jets. Everybody expects them not to be good. This team is better than the one last year that they hyped up before Aaron got hurt. And everybody said they were Super Bowl contenders last year. That rule applies even more now, even more. I'm not a blind fan. Trust me, I'm four decades in in this dumpster fire of an organization, eh? and I just can't leave them. Outside of injury. And got Tyrod Taylor as a backup. You got, we've got a decent team going here. Do I see I see playoffs? I don't see how people can think they're not going to make the playoffs if they're healthy. That's insanity. It's insanity. But, again, media has narratives. They have things they have to stick to no matter what. So we'll see what happens. And you got a pissed off Aaron Rodgers coming back too. A pissed off one. The guy can still play football. So let's see what happens. Uh, back to the game, eight. 25 left in the first period, and it's still 0-0. The Rangers are playing, not, doesn't look like they're playing with a whole lot of heart. It's crazy. I, I, and they are fighting for number one overall in the league. It's not like they're not playing for anything. We're in the playoffs, but they're fighting for number one overall. They're only one point ahead of the Dallas Stars. Only one point ahead of them. Them, the Stars, the Bruins, Canucks, uh, Panthers. These teams are all within a couple of points of each other, two to three points. So they are fighting for something. But this game here, the Coyotes, this should be a layup game, man. You should win this game like 4 nothing. This should be fun. Jonathan Quick gets the record for American-born goalies, most wins. This should just be a fun game. Uh, who do we got? James, welcome in, James. Yes, sir. Rangers got this all day long, buddy. I want to, I firmly want to believe that, man. I really do. And I, they really should have it all day long, James. Argonaut, oh, another dweller accounted for. Is anybody else going to get seasick watching this broadcast? Getting seasick? Well, but jump off the ship then, man. Jump off the ship. Gonna, I think Buffalo needs to do the same with Granado. He has great players and locker room guy, but right. Good point, Gunner. Good point. Buffalo needs a change. Buffalo should have been in the playoffs, not fighting. Should have been in the playoffs. 
Should have been in. At least been there with the Lightning and the Capitals. At least been in there. They shouldn't be where they are. Granado needs to go. Amen. They should have gotten rid of him at the end of last season. They should have gotten rid of him. Amen, Gunner. I agree with you. That's the type of change they need to make. Amen. 100%. Uh, six and a half left in the first, and the Rangers are just past mid-ice here, just skating around. I'm telling you, it's just like this. Coyotes are probably playing at 100%. The Rangers look like they're playing at about 50%. But sometimes the Rangers don't play until like halfway through the second period. Then they decide to play. Like uh, like they have a couple times this past week. Against Boston, they were down 2-0. And then five minutes left in the second period, they decided to start playing. And they ended up winning that game. They looked horrendous for the first period and 15 minutes into the second period. Then they decided to start playing. Now, that was a great game. That Flyers game was insane. That last game against the Flyers was insanity. I know they just beat Colorado the game before that. It was like 2-1 to one Philly opening the third period, and then it was seven total goals in that third period. It was like 5-5. Five to five. It was an insanity game. No, I mean, no goalies necessary. It was goal for goal. There it is. Who scored? Did he score? Hold on. I think it hit the post. All the Rangers threw their arms up like they scored. Now they're fighting. I don't know if they scored or not. Everybody put their hands up, but the goalie was still, I didn't see any puck in the net unless they barely crossed the line. Uh, I think Buffalo, I did that, uh, Gunner, I agree with you. Corey, I think the Rangers could beat anyone in the Eastern Conference. I don't know if they could beat Colorado or Dallas in the final, though. I don't know, Corey. The Rangers have been bringing it tough against the West Coast, too, man. They've been bringing it tough. I don't see – I see your point, but I don't see why not. They beat Colorado a couple times this year. Dallas, I think they lost, right? Don't sleep on Vancouver either. And Winnipeg, Winnipeg, Connor Hellebuck is an amazing goalie, man. Winnipeg could be a sleeper in the West. Remember the year the Kings won the whole thing? They were the eighth seed, barely made the playoffs. Jonathan Quick and company went all the way in 2012. Beat all the top teams. Anything can happen in the playoffs. But the Rangers, they don't need to do what they did last year, losing the first round to a young Devils team that they really should have beaten. They really should have beaten. That was Gallant's, That was his ending right there, losing to the Devils in the first round after the year before going to the Eastern Conference Finals. You go to the Eastern Conference Finals and you lose to the back-to-back -back at the time, the defending back-to-back -back champion Lightning. Okay, that's one thing. But then you turn around the next season, bring in Tarasenko, Patrick Kane, and losing the first round? Yeah, someone's going to answer for that. Uh, Frank, hey, Johnny, I hope to be back on tonight. You're going to talk the Yankees game tonight? Maybe for a little bit, Frank. Not for a long time, but maybe for a little bit, brother. Frank, it's great to see you in here, man. Great to see you in here, Frank. Uh, Corey, I know Carolina got Gunsel, but I still don't fear them. I don't fear Carolina either, Corey. At all. Every time we play them, we sweep them, beat them. I I don't I don't worry about them at all. I agree with you 100 percent 100 percent I don't I don't I don't have any problem with them. I don't worry about Carolina. I would love to draw Carolina. Uh James, hey Chris Streebler is back with my blue bombers and I watch his stats here. <laughs> yeah. Streebler, man. Wow. I, hey, you never know. You never know, brother. You never know. Raleigh, OG selling dweller accounted for. Raleigh's in the basement. What's going on, Raleigh? 61 points, Raleigh. I already brought it up. Brunson, 61 points in the, in the Rangers. The Knicks lose anyway. That's New York sports, bro. That's what we do. Oh, right, here we go. Come on, shoot that. There it is. Now we got it. Lafiniere, what have I been saying? Lafiniere, you get the new coach in. Don't get rid of this kid. Lafiniere, bro. Argonaut, I got you. I got you, Argonaut. I didn't at first, but I got you now, man. We're good. We're good. See how quick we're New Yorkers, man. See how quick we think we're getting attacked? <laughs> we're good, Argonaut. And you're right, the broadcast on here has been shaky. Beautiful shot. Lafayette looked like he was going to pass it, faked it, hit the upper corner. Great shot. 
Uh, uh, where did I leave off? Corey, I agreed with you there. Raleigh, got you. Captain, another seller dweller accounted for. Captain, what's going on? Johnny, don't you watch AF? I do. I do, uh, uh, Captain. I do, man. I mean, got a lot going on, brother. Got a lot going on, man. So I just haven't been on. This is my first time on doing anything in a month. So just bear with me, man. Bear with me, brother. I, I do. I watch the AFL. My Lions are 0-3, which is unbelievable. I tipped against Collingwood, and I told everybody I'm a tip against Collingwood. I'm going for the Lions, and I knew Collingwood was going to win that week. No, I watch the, plenty of the AFL, man. I just haven't been able to get on here. It's my first time on in a month, Captain, but don't worry. It's coming. It's coming, brother. I promise you, man. Appreciate you shouting that out, though, and sticking around, Captain. Thank you. Argonaut, I meant the game broadcast. Oh, yeah, we went over that, man. You're good. You're good, Argonaut. Unacceptable for an NHL team to be playing in this arena. Yep, we are spoiled with MSG. No doubt, man. No doubt. Arizona should be moved, man. They're talking about moving them. They're, I think this is a college arena. Lafayette is our 23rd goal of the season. Look at that, people. All the guys that wanted to get rid of Lafayette. What a joke. Come on, man. The guy's good. Um, used to MS. You know what another nice arena is? Amelie, where Tampa plays. The Lightning, man, it's beautiful. That arena is beautiful. That part of Tampa, beautiful, man. I've been to plenty of their games. The Lightning, had, and they're fan-friendly, man. The owner of the Lightning is so involved. Jeff Vinnick is so involved in the Tampa area. The fans building up the Lightning. Um, it's absolutely incredible. Go If you ever, anybody ever in Tampa, you get a chance to go to Amelie Arena and watch the Lightning play, man, you'll see it's like a real fan-friendly place, man. It's an incredible time. They have this huge walkway on the outside, has huge big screens. So even if you can't get inside to the game, they got the screens right outside. They got DJs. They got all types of stuff right there in Thunder Alley, it's called. It's it's amazing. It's an amazing setup they have there. And you can literally go up there and watch the game on the big screen outside. And there's a lot of fans there. It's an incredible time. I highly recommend if you go to Tampa, go to a in the game, you'd be surprised. For a team that good, you'd be surprised how cheap those tickets are, man. Absolutely amazing. That's a good time going to see a lightning game. A really good time. Uh, Raleigh, I know 61 points and we lose it as far. Dude, it's, it's just insane, man. The Rangers, like I said, we sweep the Bruins, who are like one of the best teams in the league. We're, of course, you know, flipping each other for first, second, and third in the entire league. And I think we have a losing record against the Jackets this year. I think we dropped two out of three to them. Two out of three to a doormat. That's what New York teams do, man. It's what we do. Remember the 10-game winning streak we had. 10-game winning streak. The Rangers could set the franchise record with 11. What do we do? Lose to Columbus. Like, this is what we do, guys. Power play for Arizona. Yeah, this broadcast is really kind of bad. I'm looking at it from a side angle, but, yeah, it's, it's weird. Arizona right now, if you notice, it looks like a Ranger home game. Because there's not when you watch Coyote, look at that. Everybody in the stands is Ranger fans. Arizona doesn't draw fans. Their greatest player was Sean Doan. As I, as I, I mean, born player, not guys they traded to bring in. Born Arizona player, and I mean born in the in their system. I don't know where he was born personally, but uh, Shane Doan was their number one player. Great player. They had a couple of runs here and there over the years, Arizona, when they had Mike Smith, the ball people, who was a uh, goalie for the Lightning, the Stars, the Oilers, Coyotes, somebody else in there. Anyway, I know they made a run just a few years ago. But uh, they really are a dumpster fire organization, and the fact that they can't get a real arena and the league can't find something for them is really atrocious. Now, where do you guys think the next – where do you guys think the next – Oh, get that. Come on, quick. I got to get this win for quick, man. It's a power play, but you, I mean, and Truba's back tonight, by the way, saying this all this time later. <coughs> Who 
Good save by Quick, but it bounced right out in front and then went down into his pad. Well, my leg fell asleep there for a minute. I hate that. You guys would have loved, died laughing if I stood up and fell down. It felt like my whole left leg was numb. <laughs> uh, Laffy is... Oh, man, Argonaut. Laffy's playing his ball. No joke, man. They're playing at Arizona State University. Thank you. Thank you, Argonaut. I knew they were playing at some college arena, and I couldn't think of where. And it's a joke. They shouldn't be playing there. They... There's some cities looking at them. Oh, I knew what I was going to ask you guys. Where do you think the expansion team should go? A Atlanta is trying to get a team again. The Atlanta Flames, which are now the Calgary Flames, did not work. The Atlanta Thrashers were a disgrace of an organization. Now they're the Winnipeg Jets. Why are they in the running again? Why is Quebec not in the running? Quebec should be in the running. I, I can't see how Atlanta can get a third chance at a hockey team when the other two have failed there. The traffic there, I mean, and you guys know I was an over-the-road trucker. The traffic there is atrocious, man. It is in a lot of major cities, but it's bad there, man. A lot of people probably don't want to go to the game. I don't know. When you put a product out like the Atlanta Thrashers, man, that team was disgustingly bad. Penalty kill by the Rangers, 2-20 left in the first period. Full penalty kill now. Uh Bond, another seller dweller at first. Ozzy accounted for. Bond's in the basement. Actually, that's not true. Uh, Captain is the first Ozzy accounted for. But anyway, Bond's in the basement. What's happening, Bond? Good to see you in here, brother. Good to see you in here, man. Hold on, hold on. We're almost getting another goal here. Come on. Come on. Pile it on this team. Come on. Let's go. Zach Jones, by the way, has been playing really well, man. He's been playing really well. Whatever happened to Ben Harper? Remember Ben Harper? Whatever happened to him? He was around last year for a little while. I, I don't know if he's still with the Wolf Pack or not. Uh, Daniel! Daniel! What's happening, sir? Good to see you in here. Another cellar dweller and huge Lightning fan in the basement. What's happening, Daniel? I love the arena. It's right on the waterfront. Oh, Daniel, I've been there many, many times. Amelie Arena. Been there many times. And as a matter of fact, I was there this past October when they played the San Jose Sharks and won 6 nothing. I was at that game. I was at that game. I was down there visiting people, and I was at that game, man. They won 6 nothing. Anytime that I go to visit Tampa, I make sure I try to make sure the Lightning are home at the same time. If it works out that way, I will never miss a Lightning game when I'm down there. It's a lot of fun, and I picked up a Vasilevsky jersey when I was there. Got it. I picked up a Vasilevsky jersey. My favorite position in hockey is goalie. So I like to have all the goalies that I can jersey-wise. And boom, you see him right back there, Vasilevsky. That's him right there. Vasilevsky, Patrick Waugh, Richter, Brodeur, Tom Barrasso, Lundquist. Igor is up there in the corner. And uh, what happened? I just missed something. Oh, nothing. Um. Shoot that! How do you not score? Get! Oh my gosh, man, we were right there. Forty seconds left in the first. What time the Yankees come on? I can do some combos here in between periods. What time is it? Six forty-five. What time do they come on? Seven or eight? Try to do some combos here tonight. Twenty-three seconds. I'll get back to you guys in one second. Uh, Justin, another cellar dweller accounted for. What's up, Justin? How you doing, man? Good to see you in here, brother. Happy Easter to you too, man. And everybody else that celebrates, happy Easter. Oh, come on. Remember, we're going for number one overall in the league. And, uh, we are one nothing lead right now. One nothing lead. Jonathan Quick, great period. Had some decent saves. I don't think he got pressed too much. Let me check one thing here, guys. One thing. Is that right? Oh, all right. 
Anyway, we had in between periods right now, one nothing Rangers, and. Yeah, bomb, man. The Bombers. I was getting back to you. The Bombers. And I, I I tell you, man, I took the Saints. Close game, man. Close game. I took the Saints. Stuff. I am not doing well in the tipping, man. I only had one win this week so far, and that's Carlton. Everybody else has lost. I took the Power. They lost to Melbourne. Uh, Collingwood, I lost that. I took the Lions. I'm not doing well. I'm not, I don't have a good start out the gate, man. Last week, I had some good wins, man. But I, I'm, I'm hovering around the basement in the tipping, man. Not good. Not good. That that Bombers game, man, that was a great game. Great game. They uh 71 to 67, I believe, was the final. Yeah, Bonds, right. Come on. Raiders going for number one overall in the league, man. Right now, that's what I was looking at. The standings. I think they're one point ahead of the stars. Let's see. In the entire hockey league, the entire league, the Rangers are number one, 102 points. Dallas Stars are, yep, they're one point behind, 101 points. One point behind the Rangers. The Florida Panthers are 99 points. And for those that don't know, when you win a game, it's two points. When you win, it's two points. If both teams, if it goes to overtime, both teams get a point. The winner still only gets two, not two more, two total. But if both teams go to overtime, even if you lose, you still get the point. So sometimes teams at the end, they fight to get into that overtime because a lot of teams fighting to get in the playoffs need all the points they can get. So the Rangers are one point ahead of the uh, Stars, three points ahead of the Panthers, and Carolina, for that matter, with three points ahead of them, who are also second place in our Metropolitan Division right behind us. Uh, Boston as well. Wow, we got Boston, Florida, and Carolina all with 99 points. Vancouver picks up in the sixth place with 98. Colorado also 98. We just beat them. The Jets are 94, Winnipeg Jets. Colorado 92 and Toronto 91. So those are your top 10 teams in the league and the conference. How about we do the wild card, guys? Wild card. Right now, the leading wild card teams are the Tampa Bay Lightning with 87 points. They are way ahead. The Lightning should really wrap up the wild card. The Capitals are 81 points, but the Red Wings are right on their tail with 80. The top two wild card teams make playoffs. Everybody else does not. So right now, the Lightning have a comfortable six point lead over the Capitals, who are in the second place right now. The Red Wings are at 80 points. Right behind the Capitals. They could flip-flop easily. The Islanders, who nobody cares about, nobody cares about the Islanders. Nobody. Nobody. It's the only New York team I will never in life go for. You guys see me on here. Rick the Ninja, if you're on here, you know I love you. You're my Jet fan brother. Rick suffers along with me as the Jet fan, so I won't rip on him for being an Islander fan because he suffers enough being a Jet fan. But nobody likes the Islanders. You guys know how much I hate that team. So, the only New York team I'll never go for, they have 77 points, and nobody wants to see them in the playoffs anyway. So, really, what we're looking at is the Red Wings, the Capitals, and the Lightning. I can't see the Lightning unless they have an absolute collapse blowing a six-point lead at this stage of the uh, season. I just, I just don't see it. So, no, I don't see that happening. So anyway, that's your wild cards there. The Panthers and the, uh, I mean the Panthers, Lightning and the Capitals. The Capitals really need to keep uh, keep afloat, man. They're, they're going to be battling for that second spot. In the, uh, in the West, you got the Predators at 90 points and the Kings at 87. Those are your top two teams. St. Louis is five points behind the second, uh, the second wild card, which is Los Angeles Kings. Five points is a lot. It's a lot at this stage. It's doable, but it's a lot. So the Blues are the most realistic team to have a shot at trying to catch the Kings. The Predators, three-point lead ahead of the Kings, but they have an eight-point lead over the, the Blues. I, the, the Predators should really make it. So that's what you have there, guys. That is what we have. That is your update from the basement with the playoff and wild card standings. Uh, Bruin, OG Cellar Dweller accounted for. Bruin's in the basement. What's up, Bruin? 
Uh, Daniel, Rays 5, Toronto 1. Yeah, the Rays, I tell you, the Rays always the most low-budget team always defies the all these teams buy their players and the other teams can't afford them and the other teams never make it. Well, we just saw the Arizona Diamondbacks in the in the World Series. They lost to the Texas Rangers. Who'd they beat along the way? The Diamondbacks, the Dodgers, and the Phillies. Yeah, the Dodgers and the Phillies. I thought it was the Braves for a minute. No, it was the Dodgers and the Phillies. The Diamondbacks, the low-budget Diamondbacks. Dodgers, Phillies, go to the World Series, and you lose to the Texas. But it's just the point. You guy, you and I can all name a million people on the Phillies and the Dodgers. Can you guys honestly sit there off the top of your head and name seven players on the Diamondbacks? Probably not. Probably not. And if you can, God bless you, because I can't. I can name a couple, but I can't name them all. That's my point. The Rays are that team. The Rays have always competed with the Red Sox and the Yankees. I know the Red Sox have had a couple of down seasons, but overall, the Yankees and the Red Sox have owned that division for how no, who knows how long, right? But the Rays are always right there. They're always right there with low budget, low budget players. Not players, excuse me, low budget roster. Evan Longoria, Carl Crawford, David Price. During those years, the Rays took on, and I think they beat the Red Sox in that playoffs that year. They took over everybody. Joe Madden was the uh, manager. And just throughout the years, they've always had teams that just don't go. Oh, look at a Rosarina, man. The guy's a monster. The, the team has always been there. They found ways to do it. And they get rid of guys or lose guys because they can't compete in the money market. But the Rays are always right there. They're always right there. Look at the season they started. The first half of the season last year, they were on fire. So is it true overall that baseball needs a salary cap? I'm a Yankee fan. I definitely think they need a salary cap. Do I think it's unfair? Sure, it's unfair. But the team, there are teams that do defy those odds. They're few and far between, but they are out there. The Royals are always bad. But 10 years ago, they won the World Series, right? 2014? Yeah, they beat the Mets. 2014, 10 years ago, right? But they made it two years in a row. I think they lost to the Giants and they beat the Mets, right? So they were, they've been around the last 10 years. They actually made a World Series more recently than the Yankees have, if we, if we really want to go there, um, which I didn't really want to go there, but I went there. So small market teams, but now they're bad. The Pittsburgh Pirates, I mean, doesn't Pittsburgh have a lot of fans? It's always been my question. Like I and the Royals too. How can they how can how can the Kansas City Royals and the Pittsburgh Pirates, whose other teams, the Penguins and the Steelers, do exceptionally well? There's a lot of diehard pirate fans out there. So how do they not have the revenue to pay these players? And the Royals, the Royals have a rabid fan base. The Royals have a real fan base, unlike the Diamondbacks and the Rays, who don't pack the stadiums out. The Royals and the and the Pirates, how come these teams can't afford players? How come they're not in it? Do the are the owners cheap? Seriously, they have the fans. They always have the fans. You ever go to a, see a Royals game late in the season when they're out of when they're out of it? They still have a lot of fans there. Why why do they never compete? I never understood that one. Uh, where am I at? Daniel, good seeing you. Oh, that's Bruin. Daniel, thank you, Bruin. Bond, way back is on holiday. Yeah, I know. I saw that in the uh, Discord. I told Wade he better be going to a hockey game while he's there. What part of uh, Canada is he in, Bon? He should he should go to a hockey game. He should go to one. Anyone doesn't matter. Go to any game. If I was up there, I would go to any game. Any city I was in, I would go to a game. Captain, are you going to start doing previews and reviews of AFL games? Yes, Cap. Don't worry, Captain. I I will. I promise you, man. I I will be doing them. I will be doing them. I haven't I haven't gone away. I'm still paying attention. Still love my Lions. Still got, still got it going on. I still love the game, man. I just got a lot going on. So I haven't, like I said, I haven't been on with anything in a month, Captain. One month, literally. You can look up my channel, man. I haven't done anything in a month on anything. Not just AFL, anything. Uh, I missed a couple in here. Rays don't pay high prices for old players. Nope, they don't. I know they don't, Daniel. And And you know what? And they've competed all the time. Uh, Raleigh, glad baseball is back. Went to a Padres game last weekend versus the Giants. Paid 18 bucks for a cup of beer. <laughs> for a cup of beer. What was it? Like a, a Pabst Blue Ribbon? 
hey, it's got a blue ribbon, right? It's got to be got to be good. Blue ribbon's first place. Um, yeah, I know, Daniel. I've been to uh, I've been to Tropicana Field also a couple times, man. Been to the Trop. Uh, I saw them play the Tigers once because I was down there. I saw them play the Tigers, and I saw them play. Uh, see, I don't care about the matchups. I'll go. They're game playing. I'm going. And I saw them play. Who the hell else did I see them play? Might have been the Mets a few years ago. I think the Mets were down there. I've been to like two or three Rays games, but I've been to countless Lightning games. Um, Because I'm not usually down in Tampa during the hot summertime. Uh, Bruin Royals won in 2015. Giants won in 2014. That's what it was. I knew, I thought they lost to the Giants, then beat the Mets and flip-flopped them. So, all right, very good. Uh, Bruin Royals won. Yeah, I just read that. I guess it's, it has to be an owner thing. How can the Kansas City Royals not afford players? Come on. Come on. Their stadium's always packed. That's BS, man. They got to be pocketing the money. George Steinbrenner, I believe, said that a long time ago. He goes, I pay the luxury tax. These teams get them. Some owners pocket it. They get mad at the Yankees. Look at that. I'm a hypocritical Yankee fan. I want the Dodgers to lose all the time. I want the Dodgers to lose all the time. I'm a Yankee fan. That's so hypocritical. That's so hypocritical. We're supposed to be the ones to get all the plays. But it's funny when people still look at the Yankees as the evil empire. They buy all their players. Not really. Not anymore. We got Juan Soto. Who else did we really get? Garrett Cole, which is a big pickup. But, I mean, you don't see the big names coming through like they did when, when the boss was around. When the boss was alive, Aaron Boone wouldn't be the manager. I don't totally dislike Aaron Boone, but I don't love him. He's 14 and 17 in the playoffs and cannot make the World Series. As a New York Yankee that just a manager, that just doesn't work. Got to go. Again, my Gerard Gallant example for the Rangers. Gone. 56 games over 502 seasons. Out of here. Not getting the job done in the playoffs. Bye. Yankees, come on back, Aaron Boone. We'll keep sending you the analytics. You keep doing the analytics and we're good. And I think he's the lowest paid manager in baseball. He's 14 and 17 in the playoffs, and it hasn't even brought this team. Hasn't even brought the team to a World Series. The Rays, the Red Sox, and the Astros, the other three teams that have been our problem against us the past few years, have all made the World Series, won the World Series, except for the Rays, right? Rocco's mad about Aaron Boone still being a manager. You hear him? I mentioned Aaron Boone. He starts barking. I can't control it. Uh, yeah, no, you can't play outside in the, uh, in the summertime in Florida. No way. And Houston for that matter. You can forget it. Hey, or Arizona, you don't want to play outside. It's way too hot. You sweat just going to the car 10 feet away. Uh, Bon, not sure we're way back in this way in Canada. I'll have a chat with him later and find out. Way back. Good day. Way back. Another seller dweller in Ozzy accounted for. What's up, way back? Good to see you in here, brother. Where are you, man? Are you going to go to a game in Canada? You need to go to a game. It doesn't matter who you go to. You need to go. Uh, Captain, if you had tip an AFL grand final from the little time you've seen so far this season, what teams are you picking? Boy, last year I nailed them, right? Remember that? Last April, I picked the Lions and Collingwood. And you guys saw it on my videos. There's witnesses to me doing this. I picked them both to go to the finals, and they did. I'm a four-decades New York Jet fan. I've never seen my own damn team in the Super Bowl. But the two teams that I pick in a game that I've only been watching very little of one year, and I picked them both right, man, maybe because you know, maybe because I don't know enough and I can't overthink anything. That could be it. Oh, hold on. Woo. All right, good. I hit a button, man. That got scary. I thought I was going to lose everything. I haven't done that in a long time. Uh, can I be biased and still pick Brisbane, even though they're starting 0-3? But remember last year, they were like 2-2 two and two at one point, and they were losing to some bad teams in the beginning, and then they really kicked it into gear. It's hard. The beginning of the season is hard to pick because there's a lot of teams that start out well and then just fall off the face of the earth. There's other teams that start poorly and then really pick it up. They really start gelling about a quarter or halfway into the season.
I would say Carlton has a really good shot at making the grand final this year. Carlton has a really good team. They really came out of nowhere and they really, honestly, they should have beaten, they should have beaten the Lions in this in the uh was it the second round of the finals? I mean, they shut, I mean, they were killing the Lions when that game started. It was absolutely destroying them. And then they blew it. They choked the game, they choked the rest of the game away. They did what the what the Collingwood did in the grand final. You shut Charlie Cameron down at the beginning of the game. You shut him down. Shut down their number one guy. I know they got other great players and Lockie Neal and all of them. I know that. But you shut Cameron down. Now you're forcing other teams. Now you, it's it's basically what they do over here with some players. We're going to lock down this guy like they used to do to Michael Jordan. Lock down Jordan and let the rest of the team beat us. We'll let the rest of the team try and beat us. We're going to lock this down. We're going to lock this guy down. That's who we're locking down. We're not worried about the rest of the team. We'll, we'll handle them. That's a strategy that we a lot of teams use over here. I would say Carlton for one. I'm going to go Carlton for the grand final for one. I'm going to think on the other. I want to say the Lions, man, but it's hard at 0-3. And they haven't, they haven't really been playing inspiring footy either, man. I have to think on that. If I had to pick, it would be the Giants versus the Swans. The Swans have had a hell of a start. Hell of a start this season. I was thinking them. I, I didn't even think about uh, the Giants. Sydney is one of the teams I'm thinking of. Wow, the Giants actually are playing really good ball too, man. You know, it's funny. Like last year, the power. The power had some start to the season. And then somewhere along the way, they lost it. Somewhere along the way, they lost it. I'll think about it. I'll come back. Carlton will be one. I'm going to take Carlton as one. Oh, way back, man. Forget it. My tips are out the window. I have one win so far this week. One. One. And that's Carlton. I, I've lost the power lost. Uh, the Saints, I picked them over Essendon. They lost. Somebody else. Collingwood. I mean, uh, the Lions lost. I picked somebody else that lost. I have four losses. I'm trying to think who the hell the other one was. Anyway, Jonathan Quick, we're getting ready to start the second period. We're up one nothing. Jonathan Quick, two periods away from becoming the number one goalie, American-born goalie in wins. He'll have 392 wins if we could win this game tonight. And the Arizona Coyotes are trash. Garbage. This should be a layup. Congratulatory game for three-time Stanley Cup winner, Jonathan Quick. Goalie. This should be – he came to the Rangers this season as a backup to our number one guy, Igor Shesterkin, who quite honestly is the best goalie in the game. Am I being biased? A little bit, but not much. Guy is playing outstanding hockey. He's the greatest goalie in the game. You can argue a couple of guys against him. I get it, but I'm taking Igor over anybody. Jonathan Quick came as a complimentary backup, 39 years old, older player in the game, three-time champion, two with the – uh, Kings and one with the Knights, even though he didn't start with the Knights. Uh, and he has been lights out with the Rangers lights out. They, he does. He only has five losses. He deserves the Rangers deserve to get him this win tonight. And it's against a garbage team, a garbage team. There's no excuses to lose this game. We're up one, nothing right now. This should be a five, nothing win. Come on. Arizona's nowhere near the playoffs. They're getting their checks and going home. Arizona is already out of the playoffs next season. That's how bad they are. Next season, they're already out of the playoffs. This season and next season. Not doing anything. Team is trash. Nobody wants to play for Arizona either. Nobody. Nobody wants. Who wants to play there? And 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 as uh, Argonaut mentioned earlier, it is a just a trash organization. They play at a college, Arizona Arizona State University. Thank you, Argonaut, for for mentioning that. I couldn't remember the college they played at, but that's where they play, Arizona State University. A, co a professional hockey team doesn't have a home. Their home is at a college. Come on, good shot, man. Save. 
I mean, of course, the players are trying because you don't want to ruin your career by just looking like you're giving up. But they have nothing to play for. Especially if you're an older veteran. I'm... Boom! There it is! Ryan Lindgren scored! Ryan Lindgren, who does not score goals, scored that goal. What a shot by Ryan. Nobody's Ryan Lindgren is an intangible, incredible defenseman for our team. He does all the intangibles. His body, he's like a second goalie on the ice. He throws his body in front of these 100-mile-an-hour slap shots. And, I mean, he sacrifices for the team. He does the hard hits. His stats, if you looked at his stats alone, you're like, oh, this guy's nothing special. No, he is. He's very special. He's Johnny on the spot. He sacrifices for his teammates, throws his body out there. You don't ever expect him to score goals, especially not a shot like that. That was an incredible shot he had about this much of a window between the goalie and the posts. What a shot by Ryan Lindgren. That's not – how many goals – that's only his third goal this season. I, I, just, I love it. Talk about players deserving to get goals. Look at that guy. Um, uh, quick. Oh yeah, it's brew. Let's go quick, man. Come on. Way back. I'm in the penthouse, JB, and you're in the basement. Yeah, very fitting. Way back. Very fitting. Schnazzy! Another cellar dweller accounted for. Schnazzy's in the basement, man. I'm coming along, Schnazzy. I'm coming along, man. I had my good days and my bad days, brother, but I'm coming along, man. Coming along. I get on when I can, my man. Uh, two nothing Rangers right now. Ryan Lindgren. Oh man, that is awesome. That is that's how you know we're winning this game. Lindgren scored. What happened to my light? Lindgren scored, man. Come on, we're winning now. You can't lose now. Jonathan Quick getting the record, and Ryan Lindgren freaking scores. Come on, can't blow this. Uh, the power went out. Oh, Bond, man. Every time I take them, they freaking lose, man. And I might as well. I almost took Collingwood. I told I told Tony. I told Tony he should take the pies because I'm gonna go against. I picked Collingwood the first three weeks and they lost all three. I said the minute I tip against them, they're gonna win. And sure enough, they did. All y'all should have taken. I mentioned that. I'm telling you. I'm a negative New York Jets fan. I'm telling you, when, when I know something negative is going to happen, it happens. And that's exactly what I told Tony in the, in the Discord. I told him, I'm going to tip against Collingwood, and this will be the week they win. Boom! That's what happened. Listen, I'm four decades New York Jet fan, so I'm not a very smart person. That's obvious. But, man, when I know stuff like that, I'm telling you, if you ever see me pick a team or mention something, go the other way. Everybody picked the Lions, though. Everybody, I believe. Uh, Daniel, thanks, Bond. Way back. Seems like every time I tipped off. Oh, there you go. Me too. Captain, the demonic forces make the power go out at Adelaide. I'm telling you. Wow. I, I picked. I tipped them. I didn't see how they were going to. I thought that was an easy one. I know Melbourne's not bad, but they're not great. I, I don't know. Melbourne's decent, actually. I'll tell you the team I don't. The team I don't know how to pick on, honestly, especially at the last season, the Crows and the Bulldogs. I, I I swear to you, like last season, if I tip against them, they win. If I tip for them, they lose. It it I think the Bulldogs last season, seriously, I think their weeks were loss, win, loss, win, loss, win. And I was the opposite on, on almost every one of them. And I know both of them barely missed the finals. So they're two teams I still I went with the Crows this week. I don't know how to tip the Crows and the Bulldogs. I just don't know how to figure the either team out. I really don't. The Bulldogs will come out and look like world beaters one week and then look like total dogs huh, the next week. No pun intended. 16-15 left in the second period. Rangers up 2 nothing, And again, we have a one-point lead for number one overall in the entire league. 
So we have a lot to play for. Yes, we're already clinched a playoff berth, but we want the whole thing. We want the president's trophy. Beautiful save by Quick. Come on now. OG Cellar Dweller accounted for. Truba train in the basement. What's up, Truba? What is happening, man? Great to see you too, man. Great to see everybody in here, man. Thanks for you guys' support. I'm not, like I said, I haven't been on in a month. Good days, bad days. But I swear, I looked so forward to coming on here. And I, it was a last-minute decision. It was like 5.15. I'm like, you know what? I'm going on. And I'm going to do that Ranger game tonight. I want to see Jonathan Quick, Quick get 392 wins tonight, and he deserves it. I want to see it with you guys, man. It's going to be great. 392 wins, most wins by an American goalie. Tied with Ryan Miller right now, great Buffalo Sabres goalie. Most Buffalo Sabre fans who love Ryan Miller probably want to forget his Vancouver years because they were forgettable. But he was an outstanding goalie who kind of followed up Dominic Hasek, which is a hard act to follow. But he was a great, great goalie, Ryan Miller, who Jonathan Quick is tied with right now. But he will be passing that today. Ryan Lindgren scored today. There ain't no way we're losing this game. No way. How do you save that? Uh, ha. Bruin, have you heard Anson Carter is trying? Yes, I did. We were just talking about that a little while ago. Shnazi, I'll get back to your question in a minute, brother. Um, yes, I don't think Atlanta, and I love Anson Carter, man. He was a great player in the league, great player for the Rangers. I Atlanta Flames failed, came the Calgary Flames. Atlanta Thrashers were an absolute disgrace of an NHL team, kind of like the Coyotes. And uh, they went back to win it. Well, not back to Winnipeg, but they went to Winnipeg. I don't think, I mean, why is Atlanta in the running again? They didn't, couldn't support two teams. I don't think they're going to win, but I don't know. They got some, they got quite a backing going on right now, Bruin. I don't, I'm, I'm curious to see. I still think Quebec should be in the running. How does Quebec not have a team? I saw the hockey guys thing. We've talked about this Bruin a hundred times, and he brought up so many incredible points of against the reasons why the league said Quebec doesn't have a team. And they were all those reasons were. Very, very well disputed by the hockey guy. And uh, it really is a disgrace that Quebec doesn't have a team. Hartford, I kind of understand why they don't. Because Hartford, Hartford was kind of like in between Boston and the Rangers and the Islanders. And Hartford, it's kind of hard to draw a fan base, I think. A real diehard fan base when you're in between teams that just had real – fan bases for a long lengths of time. And a lot of Connecticut people were probably fans of the Rangers or the Bruins. Ah, Arizona scored. Come on. Two to one. Arizona just scored. They had the ugliest jerseys too, man. That is an ugly sweater, man. I like the other one they had with just the coyote head on it, the last one they had. This one here, they went back to their original ones, which they shouldn't have. Anyway, uh, I'm telling you, they look like some – they look like a hockey team out of the movie Slapshot, like some minor league team, man. Like, that's what that jersey looks like. They could barely afford one. Their other one was nicer. Anyway, it's two to one. He just smoked quick. He just smoked them. I can't even make up an excuse on that one. But Hartford, I mean, they have a lot of good history, a lot of fun history. But they, uh, I think there was just too many Ranger fans and Bruin fans that lived in that area that it was hard to separate. I can't imagine anybody being an Islander fan. Like, why the hell would you be an Islander fan? Why would you be an Islander fan? But a Ranger or a Bruin fan, oh, we got a right back. Lafiniere, Lafiniere, I brought him up earlier. The guy... Tons of Ranger fans wanted to get rid of. LaViolette separates the kid line. Look at Lafiniere now. I think that's his 24th goal. 24th goal. Lafiniere, all the people that wanted to get rid of him. Oh, he's no good. He can't play. He can't do this. He's not. He's a top draft pick. He can't do this. And boom, this kid is playing. Coaching makes a huge difference. Broke up the lines. Got him playing with veteran lines. Look at his kid this year. 24 goals on the season, man. And it was rough because 
in this day and age of sports, Everybody's got to be a Hall of Fame player their first year. Football, basketball, baseball, hockey. It's ridiculous, man. It takes time for some players to develop. Like in the NFL, well, Bryce Young is a bust and C.J. Stroud's going to be the next great. How, how, is, how is Bryce Young a bust? He's on a bad team. It's ridiculous, man. And it, it's the sports media is to blame for that. They make you try to love who they want you to love and hate who they want you to hate. Lafreniere was a guy that everybody wanted to get rid of, a lot of people anyway. And look at him now with different coaching. Coaching makes a monster difference. Uh, where are we at? Lightning have on their black uniforms. Oh, Daniel, that's awesome. Daniel, we love having you back in here too, man. Simon, uh, the Habs have a bright future. The Habs need to get back on track. Yeah, what's going on? Whatever happened with Carey Price? I know he had some substances issues, alcohol issues, and injuries, man. Carey Price was a guy I really thought was going to be Hall of Fame material, man. Carey Price, that's a real sad story there, man. Real sad story there. Uh, way back. You're not unique like that, JB. We all suffer. I know <laughs> I know. way back. I know, man. I know. I just... <laughs> I just, it's just the, we are, it's how we are as Jet fans. We just feel like we're the only ones, but it's true. I got you, brother. Captain, I think Hawthorne will finish last after that Melbourne game. That made me sick. It was that bad. No, yeah. it's weird, man. I just, I'm not hitting these games right, Captain. Just not. Uh, Truba, how about Laffy? All those that wanted to get, yep, yeah, there you go. There you go, Truba. That's right. We, you and I were saying this last season when everybody wanted to get rid of them. Gerard Gallant is a very good coach. I said it when we had him, so I'm not going to change my words on that, but he wasn't the right coach. That first-round playoff against the Devils was his swan song, if you if you will. That's it. Losing to the Lightning the year before, he lost to, at the time, the defending back-to-back -back champions. That's one thing in the Eastern Conference Finals. He lost to a better team. The next year, you lose to a young Devils team. When you just got Tarasenko and Patrick Kane on the team, you have a team that's ready to win and you can't make the proper changes. In-game coaching was terrible. 56 games over 500, see ya. See ya. We got to move on. Again, Chris Jury signed Jonathan Quick already to next season. Don't let him walk to free agency. Don't let other teams bid for him. We're signing you now. While you're hot, we're signing you now. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Chris Drury has made just about all the right moves. And no GM's going to make all the right moves, but man, he's made a ton, a ton more right moves than bad ones. Chris Drury has been really. What happened here? I just lost my place. Anyway, Chris Drury's been killing it as a GM, man. I'm loving a lot of the moves that he's made. Uh, Truba, the issue with Quebec is Montreal is opposed to it. Is that what it is? No, uh, Truba, wait, who just asked if they're wearing the red jersey? No, they're wearing the old Coyote, the original Coyote jersey. It's like the dark green, brown, and it has that cartoon Coyote character on it. The original one, like when the Ducks first came out, except the Ducks original one is actually pretty cool. This uh, this Coyote jersey, is, is I hate it. It's disgusting. Um, they're wearing that one. It's kind of dark green with brown, a little bit of tan. Uh, Truba, the, uh, yeah, the issue with Quebec. Yeah. Quebec should have never lost. How about being a Quebec Nordiques fan, huh? Team leaves and wins cups in Colorado. The team leaves and wins cups in Colorado. Joe Sackick and Peter Forsberg. Uh, I don't know if Patrick Waugh was officially ever a Quebec Nordique. Was he actually on that team? Does anybody know? When they were the Nordiques, I think he was traded from Montreal right to Colorado, right? I don't think he was ever even in a Nordique uniform. I don't think he was. But anyway... Being a Quebec Nordique fan, you see a team leave and win cups somewhere else. Kind of like when the Browns saw the, their team leave and win Super Bowl with the Ravens in Baltimore.
Uh... Daniel, oh, the Islanders scored. Boo. I'll never go for the Islanders, Daniel. Never, ever, ever, ever. The only New York team I will not go for, ever. I'll go for the Bruins over uh, the Islanders. That Because the Bruins have nothing to do with I mean, they do because we're in the Eastern Conference. But I think that's the only – this is the only sport where Boston isn't a direct in-division rival with a New York team. They are in basketball, baseball, and football. Not hockey. They're not in the Metro. So the Islanders are kind of like the Red Sox to me. Like I'll never go for them. I'll never go for the Islanders. They're in that. They're in that category. I think you guys have heard me say that on here before, right? <laughs> uh, come on, guys. What's going on? You really just want to run right through the defense like we're a bunch of slalom poles out there. Ten twenty left in the second period. Three to one Rangers. Is again this should be a game. But I, I'm going to stop saying that. Like I said, the Knicks yesterday, 61 points. 61 points by Jalen Brunson, and we can't beat the Spurs. And we still can't beat the Spurs. The Spurs. 61 points. Jalen Brunson is my – that has to be one of the greatest signings by the New York Knicks in their history, Jalen Brunson. Has to be one of the greatest. One of the greatest signings in their history, period. It has to be. He's got to be the best point guard since freaking Clyde Frazier. I'm not even kidding. They haven't had a lot of great point guards over the course of time. Brunson is absolutely incredible. And they lost. That's a New York team, man. Right there. Great team, and you lose. You just blow a 61-point performance and lose to a doormat. Ty, it's what we do. Uh I don't know how I got got around and started uh, talking about that, but you know we're in the basement. That's what happens. Truba, the Islanders. Sorry, Truba, the Islanders have all the tee times tied up for April. <laughs> they are all great golfers. Yes. They are all great golfers. I agree with you, Schnazzi, an old group of. Come on. I saw that coming. That's why I kept pausing because Arizona was had a full campsite up around our goalie, man. I saw it coming. That's why I kept pausing because I kept looking over, and they were still in front of Quick over and over. Well, it's three to two now. Speaking of New York teams losing, to, uh, we're not going to lose. Let me not go there. Shnazi, I just lost your comment, man. Uh, Shnazi, I just have – I. I lost your comment. I, I can't get it back down here, dude. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it back. Shinazi, just repeat your question, man. Just repeat your question. I lost you, dude. I was going to comment, and I saw you wrote something, and I lost it. Yeah, they're all great golfers, Truba. Rock, the ultimate cellar dweller. My honey, number one. Number one dweller. Number one of my life. Rock is in the basement. The rock in the basement. Basement boss. You all know her. My honey, Rock. Uh, Truba, bringing in Wenberg was, oh, man, that was a brilliant move, bringing in Wenberg. That was awesome. I love it, man. He's been great for the team. Really, really good move by the Rangers. Uh, my team, Richmond's playing tonight, and I'm not expecting them to win. I don't know what to do with them either, Captain. Uh, what's up, Rock? What's up, Rock? Way back. Hey, Rock, how are you? What's up, dwellers from Rock? Bruin was saying, what's up, Rock? Everybody's saying, what's up to you, honey? Bon, everybody. <laughs> the basement boss, who I think Truba called. <laughs> Truba called the basement boss, and he was 100% right. There it is, Bon, a rock in the basement. Yep. That's my honey. That's that. She keeps me afloat. She keeps my health in check. Tell you, I don't know where I'd be without her, guys. I don't know where I'd be without her. Wouldn't be in a good place, I'll tell you that. Yep. Boss in a basement. Yep. Uh Bruin. Wow was he was never on the Nordiques, right? No, I didn't think so. I wasn't sure though. Yes, true, but good point. The Rockies left Colorado and won cups in New Jersey. Great point. I didn't even remember that. Uh, 
I yeah, I wasn't sure, bro, and I had to ask because you know I don't we don't know everything here. Like I said, I'm a four decades Jet fan. How smart could I be? Way back, Dusty should have gone to the Suns. Wow, the Suns have been turning it around, have they not? They've definitely been turning it around. Can you imagine if Wild was on the North D? Dude, I know. Didn't Eric Lindros refuse to play for them, right? Wasn't that where he was originally drafted? I believe so. Captain Richmond are a bit of a mess behind the – I don't know what to do with them either, man. I usually pick against them. I usually do all right there, but I'm scared to pick them. How about that? Uh, and a Dusty Martin is a great player, man. Way back, same by. I think he's got another year contract. Dusty should do something, not waste his talent on a team that's not winning. All right, so we're three to two because the Rangers, just like our Knicks, just don't want to put bad teams away. Got to let a bad team hang around. Uh, Captain said, what's up, Rock? Uh, Truba, the gem of the basement. There you go. The gem of the basement, my honey. That's right. And yes, guys, I probably will stick around for a little bit of the Yankees. Truba, Bruin. I know the Yankees come on at eight. I think. I'll stick around. I'm not going to stick around for the whole Yankee game, but I'll stick around for a little bit. We all haven't hung out in a while. How about the Yankees putting a pounding on the Astros first two games of the season? Hold on. I think I... Anyway, I'll figure it out. Be great if they came on. It is 8 o'clock, right? Is it 8 o'clock start? Uh, where are we at? Schnazzi, an old group of friends of mine, are all Islander fans. I was one at one of their houses during the 2020 draft. I wish you could have all seen their faces when they saw the Rangers got the first overall pick. And look how our first overall pick is playing. Ah. Oh, well, you're from Long Island, Schnazzi. I remember, right? It was Lindenhurst, right? Truba, you know that? Schnazzi is from Lindenhurst, man. Lindenhurst, right there. Right there along the bat, along the uh, LIRR, right by the rail. Wow. Schnazzi, yeah, man. Well, I grew up on Long Island. I hate the Islanders. I hate them, man. I, I, I despise them. Like, I despise the Red Sox and the Patriots. That was so great. I mean, you couldn't have scripted the stadium series against them any better. They think they're going to beat us and they lose. That was what a game. Uh, that's awesome, Shinazi. Uh, they all kept saying how much of a bust Loppy will be. Yeah, that's right. The Islander fans kept telling us, oh, look at Lafayette. He's, uh, everybody, what is with the sports world today that everybody's got to be this superstar right off the bat? Everybody. Remember, Trevor Lawrence was a bust when he came out. He's a bust. Because the media wanted you to think he was the next Peyton Manning. Trevor Lawrence is a very good quarterback. And Mac Jones was going to be the best quarterback of that draft, remember? He was runner-up rookie of the year. Now where is he? New England fans couldn't wait to get rid of him. But just two years ago, they were saying he was going to win a couple Super Bowls for them. He's the next Tom Brady. Remember, they were comparing Mac Jones and Tom Brady's first season. You guys, it's, it's a clown show. And I'm not talking just about them. I mean, in general. Everybody's got to be a superstar. Everybody said Garrett Wilson might be a slot receiver at best. Garrett Wilson for the Jets could never be a wide receiver one. He's too small. Too small. He could be a really good slot receiver. Wow. Guy's got two, his first two seasons, over 1,000 yards in each season, being double covered most of the time with a bad O-line and four different quarterbacks both years. Got over 1,000 yards, but no, he can't be a wide receiver one. That's why I told you guys I'm not big on the draft. I don't follow, live and breathe everything the sports media tells me because they have narratives to go by. What a joke. Remember suck for Sam Darnold? I like Sam Darnold. I think he's a great human being. 
The guy's prepared. He's going to be a backup in the league. He's going to be the new Colt McCoy. He'll have a jersey for almost every team before he retires. But he's prepared, shows up. But the suck for Sam campaign, oh, the Jets can't miss. Oh, they can miss, and they did. But he was on a bad team. The Jets were bad. That was Adam Gase. Bad. But he, it's not like he's a – I mean, he's going to start for Minnesota apparently, but – just saying, man, these can't miss guys. Remember running back Trent Richardson? This is going to be the next Walter Payton, Trent Richardson. Oh, he's going to be another Jim Brown, Walter Payton type. Really? He hasn't played one game in the NFL and you're compared, he's being compared to Walter Payton or Jim Brown? Are you kidding me? What'd that guy do? Probably half the people on here forget who he was. Ron Dane? Come on. So all these players laughing here, going back to the original point, the Long Islander fans mock it. Oh, look at your guy. He's not doing anything. There's Ranger fans buying into that crap. Truman and I just talked about this. Truman, last year we were saying, nope. And look, coaching makes a difference. Gallant wanted that kid line forever. Laugh, uh, laughing here. Laviolette came in and broke that kid line up. Dude's got 24 goals. He's a monster this year. Poor Philip Heedle. I wish he never got hurt, man. Philip Heedle being out for the season, man, that really sucked. Because that, that guy was playing last year. I really was expecting a big year out of him. It's not his fault. Kako's played better. I still – come on. Six minutes left in the second period. Uh, Yankees are on Fox right now? I thought they started at eight. It's Fox. I'm looking at all the other channels. That's why. At the end of the second period, we'll switch to that, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. I thought they were – I'm looking on – yes, I'm looking on all the other networks, but I wasn't uh, – I don't know why I thought they were on eight. Bond, three cheers for a rock. <laughs> there you go. Way back. Once a king, always a king, but a night is enough. <laughs> nice way back. Schnazzy, I'll never forget the stadium series. Friends watched it with two of my best friends. Yes, Schnazzy, yes. And they're talking so much smack. Boy, the walk to the parking lot for those Islander fans. The walk to the parking lot must have been rough leaving MetLife. Must have been rough. Uh, Schnazzi, I just read that. Truba, home of Gordon's uh, restaurant. Best Sauerbraten. Wow, Sauerbraten. I haven't had that in a long time. Way back, it's the media same all over, JB. Yep, the media puts pressure on the rookies here. It's the next Dusty, for example. Right, it's not fair on the kids. It's not fair. 100% it's not fair especially if you're coming in, filling in the shoes of a legend. You know, like no one's going to come into the Yankees and be the next Mariano Rivera or Derek Jeter. You know, Tino Martinez came along for the Yankees. He's a great example. Coming in for Don Mattingly, man, that is some big shoes to fill. And he didn't come in trying to fill those shoes. He just came in and played his game. And he played it great. It's not easy. And in your high-pressure situations, you're right way back. It's unfair to these kids to make all of this pressure that you got to be great right away. You got to do it now. Or you come in and your father was great. Now you got to be that great. And then the media will just stick to these narratives. You don't hear the media. No, come on. Where's the defense, man? Oh, come on. Now it's three to three. New York team letting bad teams hang around. I think he kicked it in, though. Still the point. Quick makes a great save, and the puck is just hanging out there. With no, where's our defense, man? Just hanging out there. They're reviewing to see if it was kicked in. I think he did kick it in. Come on, man. This is, Arizona sucks. Come on. I shouldn't be surprised. Georgia's. What did I say? Gorgas. Georgia's. Gotcha. Gotcha, Truba. <laughs> Sour broad. Man, I haven't had that in a long time. I really can't eat anything greasy or anything anymore. Uh, way back, read that, and I agree with you. Not fair on the kids. Anthony, Tony, another cellar dweller in Ozzy accounted for. Tony, what's going on? Should have, I, I was just telling them, Tony, you should have taken Collingwood. If I said they were going to win, remember? I said if I, the one week I tip against them, they're going to win. And sure enough, Truba in Lindenhurst, I meant to say. Yeah, and Schnazzi should know it because he's, he's, he lives in Lindenhurst. 
Uh, probably right off uh, Sunrise or somewhere or down by the water. I don't know Lindenhurst goes up and down or by uh, is that the Lindenhurst Diner there right by uh, 109? Right where the light ends. Bon, Tony Hawk, good day. Way back. All good. The Saints were the Aints. Yeah, I picked them. Lost on that one. Getting ready for a family Easter lunch. Nice. Happy Easter to you too, Tony. And anybody else that celebrates, happy Easter. Oh, Wellwood Avenue. Wellwood Ave. Boy, that, Wellwood Ave runs a long way. That's a huge road. Wellwood Avenue, yep. They got the, cemetery, the big cemetery off that road also. And then it goes up into the industrial area. Yeah. Look at that. The pub, look at Brodzinski is like right there. I think he kicked it in. Let me see it again. Maybe he didn't see it. Maybe I'm being too harsh. Four and a half left. Yeah, no goal. He kicked it in. Come on, Rangers. Just put this game away. We're off of Wellwood, though, Truba. Wellwood's a monster road. But it, no score in the second in the Yankee game. Okay, Truba, Schnazzi's asking you, what restaurant are you talking about? Oh, he said George's. He said it's off of Wellwood Avenue, but Wellwood's like a huge road. We're like, what's the cross street? Oh, come on. Get it out of there. Where's our defense? Come on. Isn't Truba back? Come on. I like Braden Schneider, too, man. He's been playing. Zach Jones has looked pretty good. I gotta admit, he's looked. Zach Jones has looked good. I just don't know what happened to Ben Harper. I hope the Yankees sure up uh, Soto. Hope we keep Soto, man. Yes, there it is. Goal number 300, Chris Kreider. Goal number 300 for our future Hall of Famer, Chris Kreider. Boom! That was like picture tailor made perfect. Bounced off the goalie. Cried is right there, as always, right in front of the net. Good for you, Chris. 300 goals, 244 assists, 544 points in his career. Future Hall of Famer, Chris Kreider. What a great Ranger. One of the great Rangers of all time. Sorry, guys. One second. Uh, oh, they're reviewing it now. What's there to review? It was a pretty straight up goal. Uh, no score in a second. Saw that south of Montauk next to the old boat land. Oh, okay. Schnauz, you should know where that. I, I even know where that is. South of Montauk, man. It may not be there anymore. Oh, hey. Schnauz, I don't think it's there anymore. Well, there you go. Crider scores Sorelli. Yes. Two to one bolts. I told you, Daniel, I'm with you on that. When they make the playoffs and I do those games, I'll wear my Vasilevsky jersey. I told you I was down there for the Sharks in, in October. I saw the uh, Lightning beat the Sharks 6 nothing. I think I posted some of those pictures. That was that was fun. They killed the Sharks. The Sharks suck. Uh, bon. 
Tony was the only one to tip Melbourne last night. I almost did, Bond. I almost did. Anybody, you if you guys see my tips, go against what I do. I'm telling you, you'll be better off. Remember last year, I was killing it. for. I was in the top three for a long time, and then I, I think I finished middle of the pack. No goal. Was it goalie? I missed what it was, man. I was talking. I think it was goalie interference, but not by Kreider. Hold on. Oh, Kreider had the puck, you know, for the milestone, the 300. He had the puck, and when they said it didn't count, threw it back on the ice. Bad call. That was horrible. I can't believe they took that away from him. such a ticky-tack call, man. That's BS. Three minutes left in the second period. Uh, Bond, I read that. All that brewing, all sorts of milestones going on tonight. Clyde will get that back. He'll get it back tonight. Let me get the Yankee game ready. This is good. The Yankees are on in between periods. There we go. Let me just set it up. Hurry up. Oh, I missed them. This is good. That time of year, guys, we can have games in between periods or halftime of the Yankees. Uh, Yan halftime of the Yankees. Halftime of the Knicks. Stuff like that. Because right now it's all about the Knicks and the Rangers. The Yankees have just started. So when there's big playoff games going on, obviously the Yankees take a back seat. In October, when the Yankees are doing it and the Rangers and Knicks just coming around, they'll take a back seat to the Yankees or Mets, hopefully, in the playoffs. Or both. Uh, Shinazi, I don't even know what's being challenged there. What the F? I don't know what was being challenged there either. I was talking to you guys, so I missed why they were challenging. It looked like a straight-up goal. And I'm not even being biased. I'm being serious. I don't see where. True, but what was the actual call? Why did they not call that a goal? I was talking here, and I only saw that they took the goal away. I don't have the volume all the way up for copyright issues. So why did they take the goal away, True? But did you see the reason? I, I saw the replay. I don't see any reason why it was a bad goal. 140 left in the second period. Uh, yeah, bad call. That's boo. That's right, Bruin. Boo. Come on. Kreider's, a, Kreider's one of the greatest New York Rangers ever. He's up there. He's with the greats, man. He needs a ring, and we're going to get that for him this year. We're going to get that for him this year. The rain, That's not even talking crap. The Rangers have a legitimate shot at winning this whole thing. Good save by Quick. How are they letting these guys down there? I don't know. Uh, Schnazzi, I don't even know. I, yeah, I just asked Truba. Let's see. Oh, there's Truba. Mika bumped into – oh, come on. I mean, I watched the replay. I I did say I th there might have been goalie interference, but I didn't even think that was it because it didn't even look like it was goal. There it is. They gave up a goal. Where is the defense tonight? How is Arizona getting in our zone? We had a two-goal lead. Now it's 3-3 to a trash team. Again, I shouldn't be surprised what New York teams do. Come on. Come on, man. This is a joke. We better not lose this. I just suffered through the Knicks blowing Brunson's 61-point game to lose to a doormat San Antonio team, and now we got to watch – Rangers struggling against a doormat themselves. Come on. This shouldn't be, man. Where's the defense? Arizona's been getting breakaways, having odd man rushes. Where is our defense? And and 40 seconds left in the period. Uh, way back. 
getting closer to five. Oh, no, not yet. Not yet. Not the playoffs yet, but we're getting there. Right now, way back, the Rangers, by a point, are the number one team in the entire league. Number one. We have a chance to continue that if we can beat the Arizona Coyotes way back. To put it to put it in perspective for you, the Arizona Coyotes are kind of like the North Melbourne Kangaroos. Like, there's no reason to lose to this team. They're, they're like North Melbourne. They're, they're similar to that. Just so you just so you know the kind of team we're playing here. The kind of team that we just blew a two goal lead to. That's not three to three. They better come out on fire and get Jonathan Quick, his all-time American-born goalie win uh, record, and get Kreider his goal back. I want to see both milestones happen in the third period. Uh, way back. Okay, so the Rangers are in contention. Rangers are number one. Yep, I just answered that for you way back. I thought someone else asked that. Number one. Uh, and Dallas is one point behind us way back. So, you know, when you win in hockey, it's two points. A win is worth two points. Now, if both teams make overtime. Both teams get a point entering overtime. The winner still only gets two total points. The loser though, if you make overtime gets one point, that's very important when you're trying to make the playoffs. Uh, Truba Torch didn't think so. Yeah, I know Truba. You will. I true. I know you will never, ever, ever let that go with Tortorella. And you're not wrong. I'm not saying that like you're wrong. Tortorella hated Chris Kreider. I don't know why. I don't know why. But he hated Chris Kreider. And I know it, Truba. Like I'm all over how much I hate the Islanders. You are like that with this scenario with with Torts. And I get it. I get it. That's why I laugh. I was waiting. I was waiting for you to say it, Truba. And there it is. Bond, Louis the Lip is doing well in the tipping, but too bad he chose the Crows as his team. Yeah, I told Lou that nobody will blame him if he switches now. He's still brand new. It's all right if he switches now. It's okay. I told him. If he wants to switch, he can. He didn't say he was. I said, you're early. You're brand new in this. I'm only a year in, but I'm sticking to my lines. That's it. I'm sticking to my lines. I'm not even going for Collingwood at all anymore. I'm just going for the Lions. Period. Period. So I just I just stuck it down to one team. I don't mind Collingwood for Mason Cox, the American. I'll go for him. So if he bounces around the teams, it's fine. But as a team overall, it's Lions only. Lou, I said he's still brand new. If you want to switch, you can switch. Nobody, nobody will blame him. Uh Bon, Louis, uh, Louis, I just read that. Way back. Hey JB, my daughter Rebecca lives in Canada. She says good day to you and the basement. Hello, way back, Mrs. Wayback, and your whole family, and hello to all y'all. <laughs> Wayback is great in here. Great in here. Your father is great in here. So hello to you, Rebecca. Hello to the whole Wayback family. And appreciate you guys joining us. It's a lot of fun in here. It's just a hangout. That's all we do. We talk about all sports in here. I'll put up Rangers, Coyotes, and now about to flip to the Yankees because it's in between periods. Uh Truba, Lavi will read the riot act in the lot. Oh, he will. 100%. 100%. This is a disgrace right now. You got two milestones going on. Chris Crowder for 300 and Jonathan Quick getting 392 wins as an American-born goalie to be the most ever, and, and you're allowing this garbage team come back from a two-goal deficit. Come on. Come on. I had enough of this with the Knicks blowing that game last night. I've said that a hundred times already. Uh, Josh Howard, as a Canes fan here, Kreider got robbed, but hopefully he gets revenge and scores the game-winning goal. He's an awesome player to watch. Thank you, Josh. And by the way, man, subscribe and hit the bell notice, Josh. Welcome in. And as a Canes fan, man, the Canes are right there, three points behind the range. Your team is always right there. The Hurricanes are a team that's always right there. And I love Rod Brindamore. I love them as a player. I love <laughs> Rod Brindamore has a nose to show whatever he played in, man. He's a gritty coach, a gutsy coach. I, You guys always seem to be right there, Josh, man. You, you're right there on our heels. I just, um, man, it's going to be a great playoffs, Josh. Welcome in. Bond, it could have been worse. Louis the Lip could have chosen Collingwood. Yeah, see? And uh, you know what's funny? A lot of people think that all Americans are just going to choose Collingwood because that's 
like the Yankees or Cowboys of footy, which they are. They are the Yankees. From what I've discovered, you love them or you hate them. And that's the Yankees and the Cowboys. You love them or you hate them. And uh, they definitely ride along that. But I didn't pick him as my number one. I like Mason Cox. I like the fact that he, the American, the whole story, I've said it on here a hundred times. But the Lions overall are my team, and I'll stick with them, and they better start winning. Chris Fagan, you listening? Start coaching your team and get them winning. Uh, bon, has anyone heard from Lou? Yes, I've heard from Lou. I was hoping he was going to pop in. You never know. When, well, we also call him the Lunicorn because you never know when he's going to pop in. He has free reign to pop in here whenever he wants. Uh, he's doing well. He works a lot. So you might see him tonight, might not. But I will be uh, – I'm watching the Yankees too, Henry. And Henry, another seller dweller accounted for. I'm flipping over to the Yankees right now. And, guys, give me my normal two minutes. Two minutes. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we got nothing, nothing in the bottom of the second inning. Uh, two runners on. Stroman pitching. Anybody out? Oh, there's one out. There's one out right now. Let's go, Yankees. Come on. Keep taking it to Houston. Come on. Let's go. This is great to have baseball in between periods. Like I said, I'll turn back to this for a little while. I'm not going to watch the whole – I mean, I'll – I watch the whole game. I can't guarantee I'll be on for the whole game. This should be a double play. One. Nope. Safe. Did a run score? Oh, no. He stayed at third. All right. Stayed at third. Man, Pena's fast. I don't know if Volpe bobbled that ball or what. Let me see the replay. Uh, he flew. Pena just flew. I mean, it was a decent exchange. Pena just flew, man. Wow, he's fast. Uh, Truba, the kind of team the Knicks lost to last night. Amen. Come on, Brunson, 61 points. Have you guys heard me say this already today? Yep, and you still will. New York teams play horrendous against bad teams. I don't know why. I don't know why. We sweep the Bruins. We sweep the Bruins. Who are top three team in the entire hockey league, but yet have a losing record to the doormat Columbus Blue Jackets. I don't get it. Could have won 11 straight games. Set the front. Oh, man, get that, get that. Soto went over his head. That's runs. One runs in. Two runs are in. Two nothing Astros. Man, that just went right over Soto's head. I, I don't know if he misplayed it. I can't. Not, Soto's been playing great already, but I think he misplayed that ball. Let me see it again. 
This ball had some carry to it. I thought it was gone when he first hit it. No, he didn't misplay it. He got he was on it. It just went over his head. He's probably playing in too much, but it's all right. The Yankees have shown we can do with our bats, but man, two nothing with two outs. See that double play that we sh well, I can't say pain you so fast. That's what why it's so important to have fast runners, because that really could have been a double play. And now what happens? Run score. When when you feel like someone should have been out. It's like giving a team an extra out. Oh, there it is. Now we're out of the inning. Third out, ground out to Rizzo. Gleyber Torres, Juan Soto, and Aaron Judge coming up. Let's tie this thing up. Let's tie this thing up. Come on. Uh, where are we at? Read that, read that. Uh, yeah, Bon, I just, uh, I, Lou and I text like every day about everything. I've known Lou 15, 16 years now. We text all the time, man. But um, he's trying to get on. Well, obviously, I haven't been on in a little while, man. But he works a lot. He'll be on soon. You never know when he'll pop in. He always has free reign to pop on, on, on here whenever he wants. So that's why we call him the Lunicorn. You never know when he's going to show up. You never know. Uh. Henry, I already, yep, another sell as well. No, Henry, I haven't seen uh, Miracle yet. <laughs> Before you ask, <laughs> Daniel, end of uh, end of one, bolts two, Islanders one. Let's go, come on, come on, Lightning, let's go, come on. Shout out to the Waybacks. Yes, Bruin, everybody, shout out to the Waybacks. Bruin, what's up, Josh? Daniel, old Whaler fan. There you go, Daniel. Yeah, and Daniel, I really think, yeah, Daniel, you've been – you're great with the hockey knowledge, with Truba and myself. I personally feel – and you can – Daniel, give me your thoughts on this. I personally feel the only reason Hartford never really made it is because the Rangers and the Bruins, they had too many fans that had to be in that area of Connecticut. Yeah, I know you got – I'm in my 50s, and I know you got some years on me, but I that's my opinion. I would hate to think – that the Whalers lost anybody, you know, to Islander fans because nobody likes the Islanders. Nobody. Nobody. Except Rick the Ninja. And like I said, I can't rip on OG dweller Rick the Ninja because he is a fellow New York Jets fan. I don't know why he's an Islander fan, but I can't rip on him because he suffers enough with me with that team. So, but I personally feel that the uh, Whalers had a hard time getting their own true fans when you have Bruins and Rangers right there, old school teams, Probably a lot of fans that were in Connecticut of those teams. So a lot of Whaler home games probably felt like when the Bruins or Rangers were there, they, the Whalers probably felt like the away team. Am I correct on that? Or well, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, Daniel, why why you think uh, it didn't work. Schnazzi, Rangers come out flying in the third. I know they'll win. I just hope Kreider gets a goal. I want Kreider to get the goal, and I want freaking Jonathan Quick to get his win. I should have worn my Kreider jersey tonight. I got Keandre Miller on. Love Keandre Miller. Love, I love, you know what's funny? Until I got this, I wasn't sure if I liked it or not. But now I love it. And Rock, the Rock in the basement, we got that Stadium Series, Panarin one, man. That Stadium Series jersey is nice. Nice. I love that. But this is actually, when I got it, I was like, man, I really like this. So, in honor of Kreider, he's got to get, well, if he doesn't get it, I'm wearing Kreider the next Ranger game. Uh... GB, another cellar dweller, Ozzy accounted for. GB's in the basement. What's up, GB? Guys, don't forget to hit the like button. I know there's not a ton of people in here, but it's always good to hit the like button. Uh, Glaber flying out the center. He's out. Um, GB, Johnny Rock and the Dungeonites, Dungeon Bunnies. <laughs> you always got the great entries, man. You always got the great intros, GB. Hope everyone's well, even Louie the Lip and all the Crow supporters. <laughs> Way back, tell Louie the Lip we miss him on Discord. I will. I, I just text him, do when I told you guys to hold up. I just texted him a little while ago.
One second. I'm trying them again. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's... <laughs> okay. All right, Soto got a hit, I see. I missed the hit, but he got one. All right, so we got a man on first, Aaron Judge coming up. One swing can make this a uh, tie game. The Lunicorn is a legend, guys. He's a legend. You never know when he's going to show up. He's always got, like I told you guys, he's the co-host. He's always got free reign to pop up in here whenever he wants. Uh, where am I at? Truba, that's exactly correct, Johnny. The demographics were stacked against them. Yeah. I mean, that's my opinion. That's what I thought. It's just old school teams. Daniel, that's true, Johnny, but they did have a core of loyal fans. I'm sure they did. I still like that. I would love to get a Gordie Howe like Whaler jersey. <laughs> I like the Whaler jersey. I thought it was a really cool one just to have it. Just to have a, a piece of history, man. It would be pretty cool. Um, I'm sure they did have a real true loyal fan base. Kind of like kind of like the uh hold on. Come on, Aaron. Come on. We need a home run here. At least come on, Aaron. Do you guys like the Yankee uh away jerseys now without the white background? Just says New York and all black. You guys like that? I don't, I don't see that much of a difference. I mean, it is a difference, but I don't – some fans hate it. I'm like, I mean, what's there to hate? Is it really that – is it me? or is It doesn't really – what's there to hate? It doesn't look that different to me. It, I mean, it's not some drastic change. Right? You know what I want? I want the Yankees to win a World Series. I don't. I, mean, I don't care what they wear. Win a World Series. How about that? Make a World Series. How about that? Who cares what they wear? It's like Woody Johnson telling the Jets, hey, man, we're changing our uniforms. We're going back to the – how about going to a Super Bowl? How about that? I don't care what the Jets wear. I care about them going to a Super Bowl. I care about the Yankees winning a World Series, not arguing with pe people over – they shouldn't have taken the white out of the, out of the lettering. Who cares, man? How about getting a World Series ring? How about that? That's what I care about. Uh, way back, go Hawks, Daniel, New York and Boston fans entrenched in both cities. No doubt. No doubt. They're smack in the middle. The Yankees. Yeah, true. The Yankee uniforms are terrible. What the W. That's what some fans are saying. The Yankee uniforms are terrible. I didn't really, I don't know. I don't really, they don't bother me. Some fans really despise them. I don't know. I have the gray one with the white background, like the one they've always had. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get this one. It feels like I have the same thing. Uh, like I said, I just care about them winning a World Series, man. How about getting back to a World Series? It's been forever. I feel like it's the '80s again, where the Yankees had good team. Oh, there you go. There's a hit. Let's go, let's go. First and second now, one out. How about Oswaldo Cabrera, man? Yesterday, Oswaldo Cabrera, I, he had an off year last year, but I always pulled for that kid, man. He had a really good game yesterday. Really good game for Oswaldo Cabrera yesterday, man. Really good game. Now, here's the problem. The Yankees starter last season, the Yankees were 15-4, and 2.63, with uh, Garrett Cole as a starter. The rest of the starters, 32-46, and 46, with a 
five ERA, five and change. That's terrible. And they did they really address the pitching? Not really. Not really. To me, the Yankees have a whole lot of, well, I hope Rodon is better this season. He did pitch pretty good yesterday. He pitched out a lot of jams yesterday. But there's a whole lot of hope so, hopefully, maybe, hopefully. Stroman's a good pickup. Hopefully Clark Schmidt can start. Hopefully Nestor has a better season. Hopefully Rodon has found his way. That's not what the New York Yankees used to be. We had solid pitches coming in, not relying on one. What is the problem here? Why is it not switching? All right, let's go, Rizzo. Come on. I'll turn back to the Rangers in a minute. After the Yankees finish batting, hopefully we get some runs here, and I'll turn back. <laughs> I'm laughing. True, but I just looked down a little bit. They look like softball uniforms from Joe's Meat Market. <laughs> you know what the first thing I thought of when I read that? was Al Bundy's softball team, and I think it was something meat market, wasn't it? <laughs> the first thing I thought of was Al Bundy, <laughs> the Joe's meat market. I know it wasn't Joe's, but it was something meat. <laughs> I thought of Al's softball team immediately. <laughs> that was a good one, Truba. Oh, right, there you go. Let's go. Get it home, Soto. Run home, run home, run home. Come on. That's one run in. Boy, that just dropped in. Dropped in. What's the old term? Can of corn? That just dropped in. Two to one now. True, but that was a good one, man. I like that. <laughs> I'll drop the jersey thing. <laughs> you win. You win. <laughs> uh... Hartford not being a lucrative might be a reason also. That could be. Could be, man. Uh, my other son is walking. Oh, you guys are talking about the dog. I got you. Bruin, I uh, do like the classic feel of the new jersey, a new away jersey. Yeah, I don't really care about it one way or the other, but I, I, I Truba just nailed it with uh <laughs> He nailed it. Come on, Verdugo. Let's go. Come oh, man. Don't miss Verdugo's first game back in Boston, which I don't think is even until like July or something like that. But don't miss that. The boos are going to out. <laughs> the boos are going to be raining down. I hope Verdugo. I mean, I think the last big name. Well, yeah, what? Johnny Damon, Jacoby Ellsbury. Verdugo's going to get boo. And he talked smack on his way out the door, too. So, come on, Verdugo, let's go. Oh, look who shows up, the Lunacorn. Lunacorn pops in, wearing a Ranger jersey. Love it. Love it. Love it. And he got the Crows background. Love it, man. You have been... Uh, can you hear me? Look, can you hear me? I hear you now. Double play. Come on, Verdugo. Double play. Right. Turn it back to the Rangers. It was nice in between periods, man. I could flip over to the Yankees for a minute. I saw that. I saw that. It was right in time to get a Stroman give up two runs. Now, the Rangers are pulling the Knicks right now because we can't seem to uh, – you know, have a bad team. Here we go. Lunacorn in the building. Three to three, third period. Lou, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, the Rangers are Look doing guys. Well. Yeah, they were all asking about you. I don't promise anything. I just said Lou's a legend. You never know when he's going to be on. That's it. Love the jersey, yes. Lou. Wearing it in Florida. Love the jersey. Love it, man. And I'm still rooting for the Crows, all right, guys? Yep. I told them. I told them that you have a pass because you're new if you wanted to switch. But the minute you do, yeah. they're going like a 10-game winning streak or something. <laughs> but what's up with this New York team, man? We get the, the Knicks. 
Yep. We lost yesterday. Um, Bronson had sixty one points, hell of a game. Yep. One one uh one point shy of the of the team franchise record, and we yep. get slapped. What we do, we've been talking about this. Truba, we all been talking about this. So the Rangers up three to one, three to three. Jonathan Quick going for the all time American goalie wins three ninety two. I mean, this should be a layup game. Chris Kreider had 300th gold yanked away from a bump from Zabanajet on the goalie. Which was horrible, a horrible call. I barely saw it, Truba told me. I barely saw it because I was talking, and I, I barely saw it. But I saw the replay. Like, I didn't even see it on the replay. And I'm not being biased. I really didn't see it. Well, you know, typical New York team. You know, we – Typical uh, New we, York. We've seen this movie so many times, Johnny. We always talk about it. Just saw it last night. Oh, that 61 was points and you lose to a doormat. Come on. And here we go. Arizona skating right down the ice, right through our defense. We're like slalom poles out there. Is is this the um the lighting? I don't know what's um what's wrong with the lighting, but it feels like there's no yeah. lights in the stadium. Had a couple of people in here because this is Arizona State University. The coyotes don't even play in a real building, they play in okay. college. They play at a college. The lighting's terrible. The, the angles on it, you would think it was a video game. <laughs> right? Isn't it a weird looking game the way it's set up? Yeah. That's the first thing I noticed when I turned it on earlier. Weird. Did you have the chat with you? Yes, I'm looking at everybody right now. I got on because Bob was like, oh, Lou took the crows last night. <laughs> Go ask for Louie the lip. <laughs> uh, took the crows. Yeah, yeah Bob, I took the crows also, man. Like I said, I don't know how to tip them. The Crows and the Bulldogs. I don't know how to tip them. He, look at this. He's down the ice again. Come on. Good defense, Truba. Come on, man. Our defense is non-existent today. Non-existent. It's non-existent. It came out flat. A lot of gaps. Good. A lot of gaps in between the defense. A lot of gaps in between the defense. We I mean, the last point. two goals. The last two goals. They were, I mean, there was nobody in front of them. Nobody. We have a one-point lead over Dallas for number one in the league, and we get a layup game, and we can't even – We should. We, I don't even know why we're surprised. I don't even know why we're exactly. surprised. Same thing with the Knicks. The Knicks, you know, we're, we're all still possession of third place, two behind up Milwaukee, if I'm not mistaken, and we get a layup, and we, we, we take a dump on ourselves. There it is. Friday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 300th goal, Chris Kreider. Finally, unless they want to find a reason that someone sneezed or blew their nose or something <laughs> on the ice here that they want to take it away. I was laughing because when they when they took the goal off the, off the boy, they threw the puck back. Kreider. 300 officially. Let's see if we find any discrepancies or, you know, the Yankees scored. Yeah, it's two to one, right? One. Arizona should get a penalty for those disgusting jerseys that they're wearing. Oh. They're awful. Why did they go back to their original jersey? It's disgusting. Even the burgundy one, the one that says Arizona, I think, across oh, it's it. It's terrible. The only one that was decent was they just had the Coyote one howling. Uh, yeah. howling. This is just a gross. They should get a penalty. They should get an automatic penalty every time they wear this. The other team should just open up with an automatic power play when they wear this gross jersey. Hey, Vaughn, you like the background, huh? I know you like the background. Yeah. <laughs> They've been asking for you. I know. I've been reading. I, Come like on. No, been... get it out. Good play, Keandre. Keandre got that out. It slipped past quick. Look at the back. On... Why Arizona's down there like they're fighting to get in the playoffs. They're not even anywhere near the playoffs. Well, this is their playoffs, playing against the number one team in the league, you know? Yeah. They're out of the, they're out of the playoffs next season. <laughs> they're already out of the playoff they've already been eliminated in the 24-25 season it's kind of like the crows already oh. I, had a, oh. I had a bad week I only had one win last uh, this week oh, I only have one win so far this week yeah uh, come on let's get another come on just put this game away let's see hold on here they are back in our zone again you know they're not going to make it easy for us. They're going to make us sweat it out for the next, I mean, 12 minutes. Oh, the Mets, they lost today too, right? 
Yeah, they lost six to seven. I mean, we had a. Come on, come on. Hold on a second, Lou. Yes. <laughs> Zach Jones. Was that Zach Jones? Was that Zach Jones scoring goals? Come on, we got Ryan Lindgren scoring goals. Now Zach Jones, two guys you'd never think. Now we're rolling. Now. It's like they don't they don't start playing into the third period. I mean, that they don't. Game. I they mean, we'll be down. I mean, against I think the Panthers we were down two zip or something like that uh, against uh, Colorado. I think it was back and forth. Um, but some great comebacks oh. in which you know is making out. You know, um, it's just giving the team confidence that you know even if we're down, we can you know we're still in it and we can still pull it out. True, the Rangers don't play in the first period; they play later on. Truba's got a question for you. Yes. What's your take on the McNeil fiasco? The slide. I thought it was dirty. Um, he he, he could have ended his career. I mean, uh, not his career, but at least his you know his season with that with that slide. Um, the only thing that gets me upset, we never hit them back. We always throw behind them. Same thing with Roger Clemens when when the thing was going on with Mike Piazza. Um, we had a chance to you know beam him. What happened? Throws it 15 feet behind him. Today, same thing. The dude already hit a two-run shot or had like three RBIs or something like that, and then you're going to hit him in like in the seventh or eighth inning? That that makes no sense. Yeah, I, I didn't – I heard about it, and then I watched the replay, but I didn't see it live. But yeah, didn't they have some previous beef, those two? Well, they're from Philly. I think he came from Philly. So, you know, it's uh, they don't like each other. There's bad blood. I just don't like the fact that he waited – um, to go all the way to the dugout before you start doing the little the cry baby, we should have did it on the field when the, you know everybody was there. Yeah, but he, uh, he shut us up today. He shut us up today. Crazy man, crazy. But I know the real problem in that game that was in game one, right? Yeah, that was uh, the first game. Yeah, the real the real problem in that game was the uh, the one hit. One hit. Oh. One hit. And historically, we I'm have not the even record on the Mets. You know I like the Mets. I is one yeah, hit. I know. I know. It's just uh, like I told you, I have no expectation this year. I'm not even talking. I'm off social media with it. Um, I'm not arguing with nobody because I have no expectation for this team at all. Crazy. We do need Martinez to come up already, you know. What's that? I said we need Martinez to come up. Oh yeah, man, that's true. They need him to come up, and they. Uh, I just don't see how Cohen can can demand the playoffs, man. I mean, what is he smoking? I don't know. I don't know what he's. And then our starting pitching is suspect, so you can't fall behind. At the end of the day, you can't fall behind because we ain't got we. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I, I already gave up. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. Truba, cry. Yep. Louis the lip in the basement. Let's go, Bruin. Lou with the crow's background. I'm loving that. Truba, Arizona got their Georgia from Joe's meat market. Also, <laughs> I swear I think Al Bundy with that. Uh, Truba, Truba doesn't like the Yankees uh, taking away the uh, the white background on their jerseys. I said I don't really see much of a difference. He said it looks like they play for some Joe's meat market softball team. <laughs> I like it. I actually like it. You know what I, I said? I, I, I just want to see him win a World Series. I don't care what they wear. But he came back with that and said, I, I can't even – that was funny. I said, you win. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't, uh, Bob, I, haven't got, I haven't got the jersey yet because I'm still debating if I'm going to stay on this wagon or not. So, Well, it's an 0-3 wagon right now, but don't worry. My Lions are 0-3. But at least my team, when I picked them last season, they went, actually went to the final. They went to the, the, the grand final. Yeah, we got, we got crushed last game. We got crushed. I, I, I can't uh, I can't have my Jets go to a Super Bowl, but I, I see the one team I pick in footy go their first year. <laughs> Been waiting 40 years for the Jets. Oh, they got a good pickup, that um that pass rusher they picked up. Son Reddick, that was a monster Ooh. pickup. That's why I listen to sports media. They uh, so many guys fans that are already good. So, yeah, the only reason I mean, Eagles fans are saying why. 
Well, if they, well, why didn't they just sign Bryce Hump? There must be something wrong with him. There's nothing wrong with him. The Jets needed the cap space for their offensive line and wide receiver. That was more important. The defense could have actually afforded a hit. Yeah, I didn't want to lose yeah. them either, but they could, the defense could afford losing a player. They needed offensive line. They're going all in. I mean, we'll see what happens, man. Like I said, I'm always cautiously optimistic with them. Always cautiously optimistic with the Jets. But what I don't understand is the media says, come on, man. 40 seconds left on Arizona's power play, 1030 left in the third period. Truba, what does Lou know? He doesn't like short players either. <laughs> Boy. Goodrow, six to three Rangers. Now we're turning it on. This is what it should have been. Milestones tonight, 300 goals for Chris Kreider. Jonathan Quick's going to get his 392nd win, number one American-born goalie in wins. Like I said, Chris Drury, I was telling them earlier, Chris Drury, our general manager, no one, no GM does everything right. He's done more right than wrong, man. He already signed Cry uh, the Kreider. He already signed Jonathan Quick to next season before he even hit free agency. Already re-signed him this year. Got a good. coach that was 56 games above 500 in Gallant. You're not making the coaching decisions the right way in the playoffs. Lost to the Devils in the first round. See ya. Bring in a better coach. Laviolette. Boom. Here we are. Look at our team now. Wenberg. Johnny, can uh, I tell you one thing, Johnny? I don't want to face Tampa. We can beat Tampa, but I hear you, man. Tampa is like – they're like when the Penguins started. Come on, get it out of there. I still don't want to see them score. They're like the Spurs. You know, oh, like, they're like it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if they were number one. They could have been middle of the pack. And this, this, they had experience, good coach, great fundamentals, and take out the number one team all the time. They got a great goalie. They got the team now, though, is on this side of the mountain starting to come down. It's like when Crosby and the Penguins, after they won their last cup, they haven't won a playoff series since. But – Everybody, the first couple of years, was worried about playing the Penguins because they're a three-time champion, and most of the players are still on the team, like Malkin and Crosby and Latang, and they didn't want to play this team. But now nobody cares about playing Pittsburgh. Tampa, to me, is – yeah, you don't want to play them, but I'm fully confident we can beat them. I'm fully confident we can beat almost anybody we play. But I hear what you're saying. I mean, I, I hear it's what you're saying. History, you know, it's the history that, you know uh... – a couple of years in a you know, a couple of years in a row, they just knocked us out. <laughs> yep, no, you're right, man. I'm looking here. Uh Bond said Lou should sing the crows sing team. The crow song. I don't know it. I don't know it. <laughs> Bro, that's almost a must. Like that <laughs> Lou should learn that. And then then he can come on here with a few drinks. He'll sing it then. Uh, <laughs> oh, without a question, carry oh, on. He'll sing it then. Truma told you Lavi would, yeah, no doubt. Laviolette is the coach and all the people. Well, he didn't take the Capitals in the playoffs last year. So what? Maybe he ran his course with the Capitals. Dude's been to three Cups, taking three teams of the Cups, one with the Canes, took the Flyers, and who did he lose to with the Flyers? He lost to Patrick Kane in the Dynasty Blackhawks. The Predators. He took the Nashville Predators to the Stanley Cup. No one takes the Predators to the Cup. And he freaking lost to who? Crosby and company. So this guy knows what he's doing. I don't ever want to acknowledge him on the Islanders. I'll just forget that he coached there. <laughs> uh, true, but Arizona from. got their – yeah, from Joe's. I'm telling you, that Arizona jersey is disgusting. Uh, I remember the short players. Boy, they bring, bring up stuff from last season, the short players. <laughs> Where's Gardini? That's loose, man. We need Gardini in here. Uh, Daniel, see you later, John. I'm going to go watch UConn women's basketball. All right, Daniel, it's always a pleasure to have you in here, sir. I'll tell you this, the, the, woman, the, woman's, um, the women's tournament has been awesome this year. I I haven't watched any of any tournaments. I'm not like – I used to be humongous in the college basketball growing up. With I was a Georgetown fan, even though I was from New York. But the Patrick Ewing versus Chris Mullen and Bill Wennington and, and Walter Berry uh, – Derek Coleman was on Syracuse. I mean, we had some great rivalries back then, man. And then uh, kind of fell out of it over the college basketball over the years. College football, I was never into college football. Just never into it. Just never got into it. I watched the yeah. big games. Just never was. I don't know why. Maybe because I grew up in New York and 
the Jets were bad enough that why would you even want to watch Rutgers? So <laughs> we watched the Jets. I, it's just well, college football wasn't big growing up up here. It just wasn't. It's huge. I know when I went to Tampa for a little while and bought a uh, – just because of the colors, it had nothing to do with the team. Well, I bought a Florida Gators shirt. And you think I was wearing a Red Sox shirt in the middle of Yankee Town? You know, like people are like, oh, you like that? And my mom, I was like, what? You know, I didn't know about the big robberies there. I was like, dude, I don't even know who's on the team. It's a religion down here, but it, it is because you know, we don't really have a lot of strong teams from the East. But in basketball, it's a different story. You know, historically, the Big East has always been dominant. Um, look, you know, Connecticut. You had, you know, Georgetown, um, Virginia be winning. Um, who's the other team that's been um that's been really good? Uh, um, uh, football? No, no, basketball. Um, Bronson School. Um, oh, Villanova. Villanova. And well, them. that's when the Big East was. Well, the Big East was huge when I was growing up. I don't think they're much. Yeah. No, they got, they, they got this mantle. They got like this mantle a couple of years ago. When I grew up, it was Georgetown, Villanova, Seton Hall, St. John, Syracuse, Saint John's. Providence. Uh, forget. I think somebody. Pitt was there too. Who? Pitt. I don't think Pitt. No, Pitt wasn't in the Big East. No. No. That I remember the Big East back then. It was St. John's, Georgetown, Syracuse, Seton Hall, Providence, Villanova, Connecticut, UMass. Nope. Nope. Okay. I'm talking the '80s. I'm talking the '80s. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I'm probably missing somebody. Lou, will you take – Lou, we will take you with the Essendon Bombers. Hey, man, the Bombers are a decent team, man. They got a huge following. Bombers are a decent Thank team. You. They were supposed to get the wooden spoon last year. Well, they were a candidate at the beginning of the season. Wooden spoon is last place. And uh, they ended up having a really decent season, man. Like down there with the West Coast Eagles – the North Melbourne Kangaroos, they suck. Uh, but I, what do you say? My lines are 0 3. Eight minutes left. Uh, Arizona on power play again. We're up 6 to 3. I shouldn't even like be nervous, but I am. I I, I'm look. so mad about the Knicks yesterday. I'm so mad about the Knicks yesterday. Oh, man, I'm so mad. That was disgraceful. And, you, and you, the, the fact that you were even down by over 20 points to begin with and then come all the way back. Take the lead. There it is. Arizona scored. What did I just tell you? What did I just tell you? I wasn't. <sighs> Come on, man. Come on. It's a joke. I tell you. They're going to, I told you, they're going to make it sweat it off for the next 12 minutes. Well, at that time, it was 12 minutes. The Rangers are like, wait a minute. We're giving our fans a breather here. Wait a minute. This can't be. But the Yankees have been kicking uses behind the last two games. So that's a, that's a good thing. Yep. That Soto, that Soto playing the uh, on the um the bottom of the night the other day was amazing. Uh. And you know why I think Soto? You know how we always talk about you know big time players don't make it big. You know in New York, um the thing about Soto is that he plays for Washington, so that's kind of a, a big market, you know. So he was uh oh come on. But Soto looks good. Stanton looks skinny. He looks good, too. Hey, remember, I think, well, first off, I think Soto is going to stay a Yankee. I remember Aaron Judge was going to be a Met. Uh, there was a guy that got an Aaron Judge Mets jersey made. Remember that? No. I was praying. I was praying. Come on, get that goal back. I'm, Aaron. Is, I'm, I'm scared about, you know, Pete Alonso. We haven't signed him. We haven't extended uh, him. We haven't done nothing. Had Buck like, Schwalt has still been there, Alonzo would have re-signed already. It's my personal I mean, how, how disrespectful can you be to the guy that's been carrying this team for the last couple of years, you know? I'll take Pete Alonzo. Anthony Rizzo, you know, I love Rizzo, but he's 35. I'll take Alonzo right now on the – oh, that would kill Met fans. Yeah. You sign and Soto I, and they get Alonzo? Oh. oh. And, to, and to be honest, I, I mean, oh. I wouldn't even be mad at him. Neither would I. He oh. went to the Yankees and put Pete Alonso in the middle of this batting. Oh, my gosh. Forget it. And he's become more and more of a better first baseman every year. Guy works and, on his and, game, and I really think he wants to be a Met. But that really yeah. pissed him off, getting rid of Schultz. And Schultz. that 3-14 down the line, oh, he will go opposite field all oh. day, every day. 
Pete Alonso on the Yankees. Oh, oh, please bring that on. I, but for the Mets luck, as a Met fan, I think they'd rather see him go to the Yankees than like the Phillies or the Braves. Right? Wouldn't you rather see him on the Yankees? I, I'm not even mad at Saquon going to Philly. No, he got disrespected by the Giants. Oh, three years, three or four years in a row. Truba, how do you feel about Saquon going to the Eagles, man? Do you think it's because the Giants disrespected him? Do you blame him? And Daniel Jones, well, they're putting all their they put all their eggs in the Daniel. But I mean, when Daniel Jones comes back, realistically, what what does he have to work with? Nothing. <laughs> the only reason he got a little bit of breathing room is because Saquon was back then. You know, you gotta you gotta put someone on him. But oh man, it's been it's. Uh, I can't even talk about it. I'm not even talking about the Mets this year. I'm done. <laughs> Still early. That's so why I said when the Knicks and Rangers are in the playoffs, I'm not watching Yankee games until I mean I'll do them on here occasionally or Mets occasionally, but like in October, I don't the Rangers and Knicks just starting, but the playoffs are going on in baseball. That's what I'm you know, as long as our teams are in it, that's all I'm concerned about. What about Robinson a, coming back? First game, twelve minutes, eight points, couple of block shots. You know, listen, Mitchell Robinson coming back is monstrous, man, because everybody can get back to their roles. Hartenstein, yeah. I shout out big time. Hartenstein could be a starter on a lot of teams in this league, but it's great for him to be coming off the bench now. It's yeah, great. yeah, yep. But he he he, um, he carried the team. He took the role, carried the team. Yep. Was he, he's a rebound machine? That guy. Remember when Stephen A was like, "Now I got to watch this Hartenstein guy." <laughs> Made him eat his words. Yep. Made him no, eat I don't his mind. Words. I like Stephen A. I really don't have a problem with him. I just thought it was funny that he said that, being the Nick fan that he is. But, oh, there's another goal. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? I wasn't comfortable with a 6-3 lead. What did I tell you? Freaking New York teams, man. Bring us your doormats, like the Statue of Liberty, right? Bring us your poor. Bring us your weak. The New York teams are like, bring us your poor in the in the, in the the sporting world. Bring us your weak. We'll help them out. We'll make them feel good for a day. What the hell is going on out here? We blew a two-goal lead, three to one, and went three-three. Now we're up six to three, and now it's six to five against a team that could that collects paychecks. Where is our defense tonight? And Truba's back tonight. What is going on out here? It's like the New York teams played down to their competition. Come on, who it is against good teams? We'll pick it up against black teams. We just play. We play with them. Oh, they almost scored again. Oh, Johnny, I tell you. I'm going to have to get a lot of Tums for the playoffs. I'm going to have a lot of heartburn in this playoffs. Oh, man. It's unbelievable, man. Truba. Yeah. So you know, Ben Reddits can't pay a running back that kind of money. So uh, a little off subject. So Mark Bentos, you know the the Mets. Um, I don't know what position he plays third base or outfield now. Um, so he got sent down the beginning of the. You know, uh, didn't make the team. Was upset. So today, I'll come back to he, that. Trouble. He um he ended up liking a, a post of the guy that hit the, the two home runs against us, and he liked the post. I'm like, dude. You're supposed to be a mess. Why are you liking, you know, uh, a post from another team? Like, you don't do that. They're going to end up trading him. Why? And then he's going to become an all-star somewhere. Remember when the Eagles made the Super Bowl, the Empire State Building was, was like, green? What was that? Are you kidding me? What was that? Supposedly they hacked it. They hacked the system. Come on. That's pretty scary in the big picture if someone mm -hmm. can that easily. Uh, yep. So Truba said that uh, good riddance to Barkley can't pay a running back that kind of money. And, to, and sadly, in today's market, he's not wrong. I mean, nobody pays running Oh, no, he's not. Anymore. He's not. Um, I'm, know, I hate to say this. Hall, huh? I, no, I hate to say this. I mean, back in, let's say, the, the 80s and 90s, you fed your running back. Your running back was, you know, your number one. You killed the clock. You ran everything through your uh, through your running back, but now with all these rule changes, it's an offensive league. It's now it's wide oh. receiver. 
Don't get me started on the rule changes. Now you can't hip now you can't hip tackles. So Derrick Henry should score touchdowns every time he gets the ball. How is he supposed to tackle that guy without hip dragging him? Because oh. was it what what's the tight end for the Ravens? Mark, Mark Andrews? Is it Mark Andrews? Yeah. He got hurt because someone grabbed him from the side and pulled his weight down. So now that's illegal because a great player got hurt. Listen, NBA and the NHL has made has made rule changes over the years for taking away some of the defense, but they don't do it damn near every season when a star player gets hurt. Oh, we got to make another rule change. The NFL is quickly, quickly becoming far behind in my likes of the other uh, compared to the other leagues. Now you can't tackle that way. Come on, man. So if you hit someone from the side and you start going down, even now you can't pull back. You can't. So what are you supposed to do? Let him go. Yeah, yeah. This That's is like becoming the, uh, ridiculous, man. You're not allowed to tackle anybody. You got to let the receiver catch the ball before you even dare hit him anymore. It's a joke. How can anybody think, talk about um, being, having good defensive teams when you're not even allowed to play defense? It's a like joke. the Buster Posey, the, the Buster Posey uh, oh, rule. Yep, the Buster Posey rule, the Tom Brady rule. Remember Carson Palmer had a similar injury the year before? No rule change. Tom Brady misses the year. Oh, oh, switch can't everything oh, 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 you can't hit the quarterback like that. Nope, not anymore. Buster Posey, you know, gets blasted legally, legitimately, like every catcher in the history of the game got hit. Oh, no, you're out for the year. Now, now you're not allowed to run into the catcher anymore. It's a joke, man. It's a joke. Every great Hall of Fame catcher has been blasted from back then, but because Buster Posey got hurt, we got to make a rule change. And it sucks Real for quick. the player because – the player themselves probably didn't want, you know, like, you gotta be kidding me. This is a. Uh, I'm not a Houston fan, you know, uh, the Astros, but I do like what they did yesterday. So after the, you know, um, no, it wasn't Houston, excuse me, the Rangers, um, they had a season Texas. ticket fan holder. Yeah, Texas, sorry, the Rangers, um, season ticket holder for 47 years. They had him throw out the first pitch to Pudge Rodriguez yesterday. Nice. Yes. Nice. That's that cool. was awesome. That was awesome. See, that was awesome. That's that's what you're supposed to do, man. Give back. That that's cool. Yeah, exactly. Forty seven years. Take it older for forty seven years. You got to give a little bit more than a free hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh you know, man! Or, or, or send them little, like a like like a lapel pin. <laughs> oh, Thanks. that's a good ring. <sighs> Instead of free hot dog. <laughs> hey, thanks for your 47 years of dumping money into this. We're going to give you a free hot dog, but don't think you're getting a drink with that. You know. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Arizona has an empty net. Can the range – just shoot it, Kako. Oh. There it is. Is it the nail? I'm not saying it's the nail. We, uh, Panarin gets the goal. Seven to five Rangers, 225 left in the third. Uh – I'll never oh, forgive man. for going to Philly. Bruin will never forgive him for going to Philly. Uh, Bond, Martin, for Essendon yesterday, equaled the club record of, wow, 44 disposals in a game. That's a lot, man. Wow. That's a huge record. Wow, Bond, that's pretty amazing, man. And then for the little bit that I've been watching footy, 44 disposals in a game is a ton. Uh, Young players like Martin, it's all about rebuilding, Bond. Truba, people forget yep. Saquon missed two full seasons from it. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think that's the reason why they gave Daniel – I still don't understand giving Daniel Jones the money. But I – million. Crazy. That guys just don't last. They don't last anymore. People talk about Barry or Emmett, Walter Payton. These guys lasted forever. But it, I think the average for running backs is three years at your peak, like three years. But everybody can Look name – that lasted and long. Ezekiel Elliott. Look what happened to Ezekiel Elliott. They gave him this big time max contract and then oh. just disappeared. Zeke disappeared. He took the money and ran. Yep. Derrick Henry. Why the tight why see like me when people are like, oh, you know, maybe the Giants or so much you got Derrick Henry. I'm like, there's a reason the Titans are letting him go. Derrick Henry. Yeah, he's I mean, you oh. you're on the goal line. I'd love to give him the ball. You need one yard for you know, I'd love to give him the ball. But now that you can't hip tackle, maybe you can run a lot. That taking that tackling away is an absolute joke. I every year I'm getting sick of the NFL on this. You know what they are? They're becoming the popular league. They want to be in all the social media stuff. Like oh, all wait. sports are in social media, but I mean they you want to make you haven't even bought in the that. sport anymore, is what I'm getting to. It's all about the you, theatrics. We haven't even addressed the, the kickoff this year. 
I you know. see how the kids are going to be? I, Kicking it from the yeah, 40, you know everybody's lined up. Like, <laughs> Just take it away. Just start people at the 25 and just take it away. Just, But you know what's weird to me? They still have the punt of all these things they're concerned about. The onside kick, they took that. I mean, you got to be a miracle worker to get an onside kick in your favor anymore. But they still have the punt return. Punt I, think the punt, I, I think the difference is that the punt is that is where your team gets stopped at, you know? So it's a little bit different from a kickoff, you know, that you're starting off from the middle of the field. You could be started from your 30 or that, you know, you know, so it's, it's kind of a little bit different. It is different, but if a guy doesn't fair catch, you can get mopped. But they'll just call a penalty anyway, even oh, if it's yeah. legal. That's all. Let's call That's a penalty terrible. even if it's legal. <laughs> like, you can be, like hockey, this is a good example here. They did downsize the goalie pads a little while ago. Like you didn't see these six, five, six, and seven goal games. You see them a lot now. In the past, you didn't see this all the time. This didn't happen all the time. I agree with the pads, um, you know, shrinking of the pads. Them pads before, they, oh, kind of like baseball. You seen the, the armor that they're wearing on the on the on the elbows? Like they're leaning into the pitches now. They're not scared no more. No, I, I yeah, that's true. They lean, and I'm talking about the goalie pads, not the players. Oh pads. no, but I mean the goalie pads were like this big. They were humongous. Hey, but you know, I. Uh, hockey needs the offense, but it's not like when star players get hurt. Well, we're going to change the rule now. The NFL is more about the publicity, who's at the game. You know, it's more – it's like the, the game itself is so in the background now with them. Oh, that whole Taylor Swift thing was killing me, brother. Oh. Oh. You know what? I never disliked Kansas City, and then I, last year I just didn't want them to win anything. Like, because the, <laughs> the, the, the whole Swifty fan – like, there's fan bases that thought, like, Mahomes should throw to Kel – that know nothing about sports, should throw to Kelsey all the time. And if he doesn't throw it to him, it's because he's hating on what – Mahomes has nothing to hate on. No, all those it's a hat players. trick for Panarin. Nice. They thought they thought uh, they thought uh, Kelsey was a bum, like he was a nobody. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's been the best uh, uh, tight end in the league for the last five years. I just said for Panarin for uh, for Lafreniere. I said Panarin for Lafreniere. It's a hat trick. But yeah, the Rangers. A lot of you know they want to get rid of him. Truba, Marshawn Lynch was the same deal, dominant, then just dropped off. Yeah, oh, yeah, he just fell off. Marshawn Lynch just fell off, and he's one of the biggest bruises of all time, along with Earl Campbell and John Riggins. Derrick Henry's one of those types. Remember Ironhead Hayward? Do you remember Ironhead Hayward? Oh, that yeah. guy had a pocket um, of time where he was a bulldozer, man. Was it Eddie George? Eddie George was great running back. He was a monster, too. Monster, but he and, didn't him and Ray long. Lewis used to go at it. He would go straight up with Ray Lewis. Yeah, but how many years did he stick around, right? Most of these running backs, we can name the long-term guys, most of them don't last that long. Jamal Anderson and the Falcons, remember the Dirty Birds? Yeah, yep, the Dirty Birds. They made it to the Super Bowl, right? They didn't uh, make it to the Super Bowl? Yeah, and they got blown out by the Broncos. It's the year that yep. the Birdie and the Jets should have beaten them. I want to see John at the quick play. celebration because all Ranger fans are in Arizona. Do you see that? It's like 80% Rangers oh, in there. Yeah. Man. Arizona doesn't have packed out stadiums like this. And I think it only holds – this college stadium only holds like 17,000 fans, I think. I think it was 14. They got it. Passes Ryan Miller. Congratulations. That's ridiculous. I'm telling you, when I turn the game on, I'm like, where's the light? Why is it so dark in the stadium? Milestone night. First career hat trick. Awesome. Too bad this didn't happen at the Garden. I know, right? Oh. Congrats, See, that's why, Quick. Well that's deserved. Why, that's why I don't think Quick should have got it here. I think they should have put him in the Garden to get that to get that record. Well, they got to meet Igor. The Igor's been playing a lot of games in a row, man. We're getting close to the playoffs. He's been unstoppable. Oh. He'll, get, he'll still get the ovation at the Garden, his next star. They'll start him at the Garden. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Earl Eagles, Campbell, Eagles. George Rogers. By the way, Truba, what's significant about George Rogers? The Saints took George Rogers instead of Lawrence Taylor. Way back when. Yep, they did. The Saints took George Rogers instead of Lawrence Taylor. I mean, draft is always 2020 hindsight. Bruin banning the hip drop tackle is just stupid. Yeah, dude, I was like, why just ban tackling overall? Can't do anything. 
Can't do anything in the NFL anymore. But again, it's more about publicity. Who's at the game? The game itself is just that's yeah. an afterthought. Nobody cares. About, it's nobody, all about nobody, offense at the end of the day. Uh, matter of fact, you said this the other day that uh, uh, what's his name for the Knicks? Um, Vincenzo broke the record, and you were like, "Look who held the record!" <laughs> Bournier. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. Bournier. Bournier. I don't even remember that man. And uh. Our cousin, our family texts me and he's like, yeah, Fournier, when the year they lost to Atlanta in the first round, he said that year is when he got all those uh, buckets. Yeah. I'm like, I don't I, oh, I, I know. Even, Fournier, I just even think Curry, the- even when Curry broke uh, uh, Ray Allen's record, he broke it in half the, half the time. 1983 he, draft. Go ahead. You know, that, that uh, Curry broke the record of the three-pointers in you know, half the time of, uh, of Ray Allen. Is because in basketball now they chuck up forty threes, fifty threes. That's unheard of back in the nineties. Oh yeah, oh way unheard of because they didn't shoot. Unheard of? Like no. It Switch was all defense the and then. Uh... No, it was more defense. Even even in football, it was all defense. Now it's just offense. Everything is offensive driven. That's what sells jerseys. It's, it's, it's become a spectacle, man. It really has. Yeah. <laughs> and the narratives are ridiculous, man. Like I said, look, I was saying earlier, and I'm not saying it just because I'm a Jet fan. I understand the media and the Jets' history of bad decisions, bad draft picks, can't develop quarterbacks, wrong place, wrong time, injuries happen. I get all of that negativity. But when I listen to this sports media talk about a healthy Jets team, because Vegas put them at nine and a half for wins this year. Now, remember, the joke of a team we've had the past – Last year, with all the injuries and four different quarterbacks and all that, we won seven games. This year, it's nine and a half, and they're saying this: the, the, these guys are saying nine and a half. Vegas Jets, a healthy Jets team, they don't believe that. Nick, right? A lot of these guys are just like, I don't see the Jets doing that. I don't see them making a the play. Oh, Hassan Reddick, they got a guy on the decline. Like every move the Jets make is just going to be bad. Tyron Smith, eight time Pro Bowl. You know what? You might get 13, 14 games out of them. But like there's so many Jet haters on ESPN, Fox Sports, and the debate shows. And I like a lot of them most of the time. I what do. What did they say about Bronson? What did they say about the Knicks getting Bronson? Right. When Brunson came, this was the Knicks' way to tell their fans, hey, don't worry about Donovan Mitchell. We got a guy. And then they said, what? He can't handle the pre- he won't be able to handle the pressure in New York. He doesn't have Luca by his side anymore. They picked the wrong guy. They're overpaying for a guy that will not make it in New York. Now they're all kissing his ass. You said something a little while ago before I got on. It's gonna go down as one of the best signings ever. Oh, Brunson, yeah. Oh, yeah. Brunson, I thought you were gonna yeah, say Brunson. something else. Yep. Oh, no, no, no. Just no. saying that he's gonna go down as one of the best signings ever. Right now, this man is breaking every Nick record. <laughs> you know, like. He was one point away, one point away from breaking the on the 62. Crazy. You know what else is crazy? The Yankees are losing two to one in the bottom of the fifth inning. They're losing two to one. And the Astros have one hit. That's crazy. Yep. One hit. The Yankees have five hits. That's New York for you. Yep. It's because of an error. And uh I gotta say something. Pena. They had first and third, one out. Payne hit a ground to the Volpe, who turned the ball perfectly. Turned it second, threw it to first. He'd already beat the throw. Just flat out beat it. I was like, wow, this dude is lightning fast. And, and then, of course, you already know the next hit. It's going to go in, drop for another run. And that was the one hit. <clears throat> Strowman's oh, been pitching great. I, I was about to say, oh, look who's pitching. Yeah. Oh, there's another hit. Must be me, because when I turn the Yankees on, then he gives up a hit. So it's got to be me. Maybe I should turn away from this. Uh, Truba, 1981 draft. Yep. <clears throat> My bad. It's all good, dude. You brought up a great name, George Rogers. Lunicorn. Rock said, what's up, the Lunicorn? What's up, Rock? I, oh. I hope you like I hope you like you missed the softy the other day. <laughs> I ran out to get it. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Lunicorn. Right. Yep. We heard it, too. Yeah, I told her that you uh, text me saying, hey, I saw you at that ice cream truck. <laughs> Gotta get I'm sorry, honey. That's, the, that's the best ice cream in the world. I don't know why. I don't know what they put in it, but it's the best ice cream in the world. Strawberry Sunday. Yeah, she, uh, that's oh, funny. I, I told it. her. I told her. <laughs> Mine is, is a strawberry milkshake. 
I love I it. Oh, I love stop it. Them. It's cold here too. I mean, it was with the wind itself, it like fifty eight. Yeah, you know, well, uh, not where you are. It's like ninety eight. The uh, yep. She's like, I did. That's funny. Yep, Lunicorn. She gave you that <laughs> name too. I know. <laughs> Thank She's you. She's the one that gave you the name. That's why I tell people, "Where's Lou?" I said, "Hey, he's the Lunicorn. He has he come on here whenever he wants. I don't know when that's gonna be." Uh, no, I was watching. For, I was watching from the beginning. Is like I said, I'm just a little bit busy. Got friends and family coming in, in and out. You know, the last couple of weeks. So that's why I haven't been on the the um the AFL chat because I've just been so busy. I told him, yeah, you work a lot, man. I mean, hey, life happens. Uh, <clears throat> Bruin says hello again. Bagger Dave, no the seller dweller accounted for. Bagger, what's up? Not sure anybody cares, Bond. What did he say? JB and Lou, the Easter Sunday game between the Western Bulldogs and West Coast starts in one hour. <laughs> I know. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Yo, uh, once again, nobody has heard of the, the Marine from California or San Diego. Who? There was a, a one of the seller uh, cellar dwellers. From, from oh, like Raleigh. oh no, yes. Mr. Mar Raleigh was in here earlier. Mr. Marine, I no one's heard from him, man. No, okay. I, mean, I hope he's doing good, man. I hope he's doing good. I hope so too. I haven't been on in a month, but he usually comes on for Ranger games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick, actually, he hate he doesn't like baseball, so you, I wouldn't expect. But I I thought he'd drop in to say hello, but nobody's heard from him. Okay, well, hopefully he's doing good. All right, man. I sending hope best, so. Sending I best wishes to him. The Rangers got fifty wins. The Garden teams are playing for real. Yes, they are. Oh, come on with the overthrow. It's me. Sorry, Yankees. I shouldn't have turned the game on. Another overthrow, uh, man. Come on. Another error. So everything uh, is pitching great. On. I turned the game on. Strowman gives up that weird hit that we had an error to make it 2-1. to one, 2 nothing. Then I turn away from the game. Come back, and now he gives up more hits. Look at this. This is an so error. That's three earn, uh, unearned runs, right, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, I think one was earned. The other two would be okay. earned. One was earned. Oh, it was a terrible throw by Volpe. That was awful. What was that? Uh, we're going to start the marathon, John. This is a marathon. I'm not staying on for this whole game. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just saying just the baseball in general is a marathon. Oh, you know? yeah. We know that. Look at the Rays. Remember the Rays the first half of last year? Everybody, oh, they're winning the whole thing, and then they fell off. The Yankees two years ago, that full first half, then they went 10 and 18, like, in one month there. Oh. We can't get over without talking about this. What about that betting scandal from L.A.? What do you think about it? Oh, that there's going to be a lot to come out of that, man. It's not as – the problem with me is they already changed the story twice. Uh, yes. First, he knew about it, helped out a friend. Then he doesn't know anything about it. And then, this is my take on it right now. Otani's people, his crew, mm -hmm. his team, wants you to believe. This is what I'm getting from it. Wants you to believe that he's an amazing baseball talent that the world's hardly ever seen, but is a complete moron when it comes to his finances. Right? I mean, that's what they're trying to sell. It, it, not in so many words, but you know what I'm saying. Like, No, no, no. I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I, my two points on this. Yeah, it Rob, was, where's Mr. Marine? That's right. We don't know. It was it was $4.2 million or something like that, or 2.4, whatever it was. That's not chump change. That's not something that your accountant won't tell you, hey, your best friend is taking out money. And then the other thing that I give credit to my sister, she goes, it's a culture thing. Do you think the guy's going to steal knowing that it's going to disgrace his family back in Japan? You know, stealing, I think it's a cover-up. He's, he's taking the blame for Otani. How do you not know? How do you not know? That's not chump change. It wasn't like uh, 50 grand, 100 grand. It was millions. Happy Easter, honey. Rock is out. Happy Easter, happy Rock. Easter, happy Easter, Rock, Rock. Well, I'll be happy Easter here with you. Bruin says, see you later, Rock. Basement bombers. Bom <laughs> no, oh, and another thing, another thing, John, think about this. MLB knows what happened. They know what happens. I just think that they're trying to uh, sweep it underneath the rug because this is the best player that they have. If 
he gets blackballed from baseball. You know how much money they're going to lose on feet, um, jerseys, um, just revenue all around. They're going to lose billions of dollars because of this man. Not millions, billions. Oh, yeah, and some people think that if Otani's a part of it, he's just going to get a slap on the wrist and let him keep playing. Oh, he will. I promise you he will. And that's why the best friend is going to – he's taking the he's – taking, He's taking the blame for it. I guarantee you, he's well, taking the blame. What are you doing, Pete Rose? That's a, that's another reason why they're sweeping it underneath the rug. They, because if, if you let this man that's been betting on whatever it is, then you're going to be. What are you going to do with Pete Rose? Like you're going to have to let him in. What do you do with Pete Rose? If you let if Otani uh, is a part of this deal, if they find it out down the road or whatever, and he was a part and he was making bets himself or whatever the case. And you let this that is a nightmare happen. for them. This is a I, nightmare I, I, for them. What do you do with Pete Rose? How long is Pete Rose the bad guy? And it's so funny that Bud Selig is in the Hall of Fame as a commissioner, knowing what was going on, and one of the biggest guys against Pete Rose cheating. It's what so. About the steroids? Do you think they didn't know about the steroids and 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 Balco and all that? They knew what was going on. Mark McGuire yeah. and Sammy Sosa saved baseball. They saved yeah. baseball, in my opinion, at least. Yep. It's crazy. They knew what was going on. This, yo, you don't you don't run a billion dollar business not knowing everything that's going on. There's nothing that they don't know that was going on. Alex Rodriguez went to the to the Yankees the first week before he even played a game. Got caught in in in, in a in a gambling den in Washington Heights. They knew right away. I, it's such a problem, man, because. Pete, he, I mean, he has a point when it comes to the steroid era, and then no one got, no player got banned on the Astros, and yet he's just the most horrendous person to ever come around. It's really, yeah. I mean, after a while, it really is a joke because he, that's the way they treat him. Like he's worse than all these guys. Pete always says, "I'm the one." They say I altered games or bet in areas or whatever the case. These guys are altering records. They're altering this. You know, I just it, this whole betting thing. Pete's probably like, "Come on." Get me back. Like yeah. and he'll make the Hall of Fame when he passes away. This is karma for MLB. This is the yep. best karma that they can get. Their Amen. best player is in the middle of one of the biggest scandals. And uh, I forgot who it was because at first when he said it, he said this is yeah. probably one of the worst um scandals from the Black Sox all the way to a couple of other things that he mentioned. And I didn't think about it, but then I started thinking about it and like, well, how much money are they planning to lose? Um, this, that, you know, international, this, that. And then, once again, here comes Pete Rose. Now here comes Pete Rose again. If he's he always going to come if, up because he's always going to come up. And, and Bud ceiling has gone now. He was the biggest guy yeah. against Pete Rose, and it's like, dude. And I get it. Pete Rose wrote that book, how he didn't do it, and he had a lot of big people like Hank Aaron and other people supporting him. And then it turned out he lied to all of them. Okay, I, I get that part. That's really bad because it made other people look bad. But it's just like all this other cheating and scandals and all this other crap going on. And and Pete is still the bad guy. Like he's still banned for life. And it just is oh. a joke. And so if Otani's caught in this whole scandal, it's some no matter what, big, small, or whatever, Karma. he's gonna keep coming up. Because to me, Pete Rose had a gambling addiction problem. He had an addiction problem it was never proven as far as i know it was never proven that he bet on his own teams yeah as far as i know he, he yeah. was never proven that we've never heard i mean we've heard a lot of um evidence but he never bet on or against his team right uh bag of dave says happy easter ruin happy easter bon i'm going to barbecue soon easter everybody's saying happy easter rock says happy easter Bruin, can I get a quick rundown of the Otani situation? Yeah, that's what we're doing. And we need justice for Pete Rose. Bruin, 100%. Justice for Pete. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And like I said, this is karma for the MLB. Keep so talking, much karma. Give me two minutes. Keep talking. So real quick, just you know, um, just a quick recap. Um, Otani's uh, supposedly his um, his, um best friend, which is a translator, got caught. Um betting on sports first they said like oh no you know Otani was, wasn't involved it was you know the guy was stealing oh no excuse me hold on the first one was like no Otani just paid off his you know his, his debt it was like 4.2 million dollars there's no way in the world that you take or steal 4.2 million dollars 
without that man's accountant telling him like, yeah, I know your friend, best friend has uh, um, access to your account, but $4.2 million is not chump change. So they put out one story that he just paid it out because they found his name on the bookies slip. Then the next day they were like, no, no, the guy was stealing from a car. He didn't know, he didn't know what's going on. There's no way in the world someone steals $4.2 million from anybody without them noticing. And then they started saying like, oh, he had nothing to do with it. He didn't know, blah, blah, blah. And like I was just telling John, it's karma. Baseball, MLB is trying to sweep this underneath the rug, allegedly, because I have to say allegedly before I, I get sued or something. Um, hey, Lou, let me interrupt for a minute. Yes, yes, yes. You have the Yankee game on? Oh, of course I do. How do you feel? Right I got I to gotta run to the store. How do you feel about taking over for like a half hour? Oh, let's go. I'm, I'm here. Lou is taking over. He's got the chat. It's Lou Talks time. You all wanted Lou. You got Lou. I'll be back in a half hour. It's only the fifth inning or sixth inning now. I'll be back in a half hour. Lou's taking over the show as of right now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, kind sir. You got but it, Lou. It's all you. That's it. At the end of the day, I, I do truly believe that baseball knew what they were doing, what's going on. Um, at the end of the day, this man is the best thing that they have going, not only in the state, but internationally. Um, best player, which I ain't going to front. I, I have never seen a player hit 30 home runs or whatever the case might be and a couple of strikeouts and, you know, pitching the way he does. And they not know what's not going on. There's no way in the world baseball didn't know that this guy was gambling. I think they once they made the first comment saying like, oh, um, he just paid off his debt. And then the next statement, which is the one that's kind of like what John was saying, he made too many statements, was, oh, he didn't know. How do you not know someone steals $4.2 million from you? You don't think he had accountants um, or people that, you know, watch his money and say, hey, I know your best friend has, you know, access to your money, but the dude just took out $4.2 million throughout, you know, six months. How do you not know? How do you not know? Yes, Bob. I like the pictures that you put on the uh, the other day with your family going out to the game. Um, I haven't really been keeping up with the uh, AFL, but I do enjoy it. It's a sport that I'm going to say is amazing. I ain't know nothing about the AFL. And yes, I picked the Crows because no one had them. So I was like, ah, oh, let me pick some uh, team that nobody has, which you're right. <laughs> I think I made a bad move because before the season opened, you guys told me that Ben player was injured probably for like half the season. Might even might not even come back from what I was reading. Um, uh, I haven't got this, any jersey yet. I do like that they have the new uh, – what is it, Tasmanian Devils or something like that? The green, the green team is going to come out next year. Um, I agree, Yo, Bruin. I agree. There's no way in the world he didn't know. Come on, that's like I give my, you know, I give my best friend, hey, my debit card, hey, go get some gas to your car, go get some beer. Next thing I know, I got a hundred dollars missing that wasn't shouldn't be missing, and that's only a hundred dollars. Imagine four point two million dollars. I think that I swear I think that MLB is just trying to sweep this underneath the rug. Let's get rid of everything and just let's not talk about it no more. But it's it's going to be on because there's going to be some reporter that's going to be like, I want the truth. I need to know the truth. And talking about reporters, regardless of where they're from, they're going to find the truth. There's always a paper trail. If look, I know some of you guys are from Australia, but look what happened to Nixon. They follow the money. You always follow the money. When you follow the money, it's going to tell you exactly what happened. Met fans, plans, Yankees, sit back down and enjoy. No, I wasn't. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't knock on the Yankees at all. Anybody that knows me or has been here, I don't knock on the Yankees. I grew up in the Bronx for 28 years. Now I live in Tampa, which uh, a lot of the people here hate New Yorkers, so. I root for the Yankees as long as they're not playing the Mets. The Tasmanian Devils will enter the AFL in four, it's four years. Okay. I like their uniform. Oh, I like their uniform. Love their uniform. I'm surprised no one ever mentioned the, you know, the, the, the Tasmanian Devils, which was a big cartoon, you know, uh, what's what I'm looking for? 
icon, you know, for so long, all the way from like the, you know, probably from the sixties or seventies. Anthony, thank you for stopping by. Tony on. But yeah, seriously, I've been picking up on the uh as you can see, I'm a I'm I pledge my allegiance to the pros this year, which I think <laughs> hindsight is a really bad decision. I know you guys are gonna laugh at me, but oh man, uh we got our butts kicked last game. I think we lost by like 30 or something like that. It wasn't even close. I was watching the highlights. Um does anybody know where I'm at in the standings? In the in the tipping? Anybody knows where the stand where I'm at in the standings? Please let me know. Because I don't know at all. Uh, the Yankees have a really good lineup this year. I hate to say them getting Soto. I thought they were even going to get Snell at one point, but I guess they didn't. So it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's a crazy time in sports right now, especially in New York, which we have two teams that, uh, well, at least the Knicks historically have not done well in such a long time that this year, even if they're in third place, I'm going to tell you they're a scary team. If they get Randall back before the year's over, they're going to be a very scary team. They're going to be very deep on the bench. And him going down kind of put everybody else to step up, which, I mean, Hartstein, Vivincenzo, McBride. Um, who else is out there? That, that, there's, there's so many people that, oh, 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 Precious. Like, who the hell is Precious? Where we, me and my roommate was like, oh, who's number five? Who's number five? We used to put on number five until he just started stepping up and just scoring 15 points, 10 points, 12 points, almost 27 points at one point. So it's been good. It's been good. It's been real good. The, the, the Knicks, look, they look good this year. The Rangers at least, at least make it to the cup or at least make it to the championship. I don't really see anybody in the East stopping them, but – once again, this is New York, and New York teams will always uh, make you sweat it out and, and either break your heart and then break your heart again. So it is what it is. So now I'm watching the Yankee game. Strowman is pitching. He used to pitch for the Mets, and he left the Mets, went to the Cubs, if I'm not mistaken, and trashed us. I mean, completely trashed us. And... He had a really bad season last year, so I'm surprised that the Yankees gave him so much money this year. So, Bob, real quick, so how do they how do they draft their players? I know in hockey, um, when I know the last couple of times, anytime there was an expansion with the uh, with the Anaheim or, or um, I think it was the Vegas Knights, every team has to pick X amount of players that they're going to protect that you can't pick from. And then they'll leave, let's just say, 12 players left, and then, you know, that team can pick from the players. So in the AFL, how do, how are they going to get their players? Are they going to have a draft? Are they going to just, you know, be able to sign players if they don't want to? So, I'm a, you know, I don't know nothing about the AFL, but I do like the um, – what's it called? The ladder, I think it's called the ladder or something. But like they jump under each other's back, and I even tell you this: that sport is no joke. They don't wear no pads, they don't wear no helmets, and they blast the bejesus out of each other. Oh, my, mg! And it, and I thank you for all the the Aussies that were sending me uh, clips and films and highlights and you know so many videos of the Grand Championship from like eighty nine, eighty eight, eighty seven that I watched, and I watched all of them. I was you know I was talking to you guys. But I just don't know how are they going to be able to draft their players, how do they pick their players. So I know in hockey and in baseball, they'll be like, hey, just throw in a, you know, a random number. You got 32 players on your team. You have to at least protect 25 of them. And then everybody else is fair game. So when um, the Vegas Knights, their first year, their inaugural year, they made it to the trip. And I, the reason why they made it to the chip is because whoever was their manager picked the best players. And, yo, they had a great season. I thought they were going to win. They didn't, but I thought they were going to win. I hate Houston. I'm not going to lie. I hate Houston. 
I don't like Philly. I don't like Boston. I talk about the MLB. Um, I'm a little bit half and half with the Dodgers because there's no way in the world you have like a $2 billion team and then everybody else is like not even close to your payroll. So at least, you know, the thing about baseball, there, there is no, um, there's no salary cap at all. No salary cap. And all the money is guaranteed, guaranteed. Unlike baseball, unlike uh, hockey and everything else. Well, I, don't, I don't know if hockey is guaranteed. I'm not even say that. But I know football is not guaranteed. They can sign you for whatever. If you don't perform, they can cut you and that's it. So right now is the bottom of the six. Yankees are losing three to one. Man on second. And not for nothing, Strowman is pitching off the chain. And I can't stand that dude. And he's half Puerto Rican. I'm Puerto Rican too. I'm half Puerto Rican. So he's half Puerto Rican. I just, he has too much of a big ego for me. And he pitches mediocre most of the time. He'll have his highlights. He'll have his games that, you know, he'll have 10 strikeouts or whatever the case might be. But he's not pitching bad against a, a, a great lineup because he was his lineup every, for the last, I think for the last eight years, they won their division or something like that. And made it to the championship game, or at least, you know, the division championship game, like six or seven years in a row. I don't like Boone. I know Johnny has said that you don't like Boone either. I don't like Boone. Uh, I think he's a yes man for the Yankees. But some of his uh, in game decisions are questionable. Not something that I would be like, hey, that's what I would do. But I don't get paid the big bucks to say it. All right, let's see here. He's already has 87 pitches in the bottom of the bottom of the sixth. So this is definitely his last inning. Especially that it's you know the beginning of the season. You don't want to wear people out. I'm surprised I ain't getting no questions from you guys. Usually you guys have a lot of questions coming up here. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, he's pitching good. A lot of the pitches are are have a lot of break on it. I don't think the hitters are seeing it. I don't think they're seeing the spin on the ball. So five and one third, four hits, three runs. No, see, no, I was right. No earned runs. So all the runs that he gave up, those three were not earned because they were two two errors. So he's pitching good. I'm just surprised that he's losing. I know it's early in the season, so a lot of the not everybody's up, you know, up to mid uh, mid season form. So you know, it's, it's uh, he's doing good. I still like the uniform. I don't think the Yankee uniform is that bad. I know Train said that it, they look like they're working for a meat market or something like that, but they still look good. And he has up on deck. He's over for two. He needs to get out of his inning without giving up a run. He has to get out of his inning. If the Yankees want to come back, he has to get out of his inning without giving up another run. Because one thing about Houston, they have great defense. They have a great bullpen. Well, great all-around team for the last probably like six, seven, eight years. Probably you know the top of uh top of the food chain, regardless of you know people say they were cheating and all that. And even if they cheated that year, they still won another championship after that. So like you can't blame the garbage can after that. Can't blame the garbage can after that. 
still mad at the Knicks from, from yesterday because uh my man Bronson scored 61 points, one point away from uh breaking the franchise record. Oh, hold on. Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think my, my, my feed just updated up here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm currently sitting in eighth place with 14 correct tips uh, for the season. Five of us lead on 16. Wayback is in the penthouse. Damn, Wayback. I can't stand that dude. <laughs> okay, as the right. Okay. I just wondering why my feed is not updating. I'm sorry. Rock, what's up, Rock? Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to catch up on the feed. I'm sorry, guys. You know, like I said, this is my first time doing this by myself. So the basement bomb of bonds, you know, yeah. Oh, the Knicks lost to um they lost to the Spurs yesterday. One of the, you know, bottom dwellers, if you want to call it that, you know, being cliches over here. Um so uh Bon, bon how many how many people in in, in our uh, fantasy league over here we call it the fantasy league? There's no way of trying to get nobody. Methan, okay, whatever, whatever. So yeah, so Bruin, so the Knicks lost to the, the the Spurs yesterday. And the first half, we we were down by 21 points. The third quarter, let me tell you, I mean, Boston went off. I think he scored like 26 or 24 points in the third quarter by itself. I told my roommate, I was like, yo, he scored score 60 today. And then I was 61. We got the lead. Then we lost the lead. Then we got the lead. Then we ended up going into OT. And then after that, it was just they were just, they bombed us out, man. They bombed us out. Mm. I want to apologize. I don't talk as much as Johnny does because that man is a is a, is a sports almanac when it comes to everything. And I'm gonna tell you, Ozzy is this. Give Johnny a couple of years, and I promise you that man will know your whole history about everything about the AFL. That man is no joke when it comes to his memory. B. Strowman got out of it. There you go. There you go. But this year, let me talk about my uh, <laughs> let me talk about my match real quick. I have no expectations for them. I have no, I usually I'm Mr. Ra Ra, Mr. Pom Poms. I wave my pom poms. I go on social media. I argue with my friends, family, um, people on every, every, uh, platform you can think of. But this year, I don't care. I know it sucks as a fan to say that I don't care. We didn't make any big explosive moves. Um, we didn't pick up no, no, Top tier, you know, free agent. We ain't make no big trades. I think, uh, well, losing Verlander and Scherzer last year, losing, uh, there was, a, I forgot who else we did. We, we ended up trading. Our minor league team went from in the mid or the mid, mid 20s to yeah. top three in the league, which is unheard of. We ended up picking, um, Akura's younger brother. Um, and a couple of other players that yesterday for the uh, Triple A team, they went back to back, hit some monster home runs. I'm talking about like back to back out of the damn stadium. 
So that's the only thing that I have, that I can hold my hat on. I like Beatty. Beatty came in at a three run home run in, in the bottom of the of the eighth today. Peter Alonso hit his first home run today. Um Oh, poor Bronson, yes. 61 points. And, yo, he was unstoppable yesterday. No matter if they try to double-team him, he was scoring from the paint, three-pointers, mid-range. He was on fire. You couldn't stop that man yesterday. And it's just typical New York team. They're going to end up losing. Just like the Rangers today. Think about it. They were going against the, probably the last-place team in that division. They don't even have their own stadium. They're playing in the college stadium. Because I even told John, I'm like, yo, why does, you know, the, the, the lighting look crazy? And he's like, no, they don't even have their own stadium. And they made us sweat it out. We get on front, we go back, we go back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We go up by two, they end up tying it. We get back up by two, they end up tying it. Like, come on. But the Rangers look different this year, and I'm happy about that. There are 11 people in the top in competition. A long way to go this season. I know way back is awesome. Way back is awesome. Seriously, he always uh in our uh, I don't know what that thing's the sport tipping chat that we have. Um, you guys have like I said, you guys have been very generous, very um enthusiastic, sending me videos, which I promise you. I know you guys might not think I do, but I watch every clip that you guys send me. And that's why I ended up picking the pros. I forgot the guy's name that, you know, that you guys sent me. And I was like, wow, this guy's freaking amazing. And then next thing you tell me, you guys are like, yo, he's not even in the league anymore. And I'm like, what? I'm like, no. So, but anyway, I'm going to be a pro for the end, uh, to the end of the season. Um, would I stay a pro after this? I don't know. I don't like switch siding. I've been a, a Mets fan for for so long, even before 86. I grew up in the Bronx, which is a big Yankee, a big Yankee, well, it's the Yankee town. That's where they're from. A lot of my friends that were Mets fans, they switched over to the Yankees. And I said to myself, how is that loyalty? You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I stood a Mets fan all through the 90s when the Yankees were winning one, two, three, four, five championships. And I ain't switched. So I'm still here, and I don't think I'm going to switch, but you never know. You never know. All right, so here we go. Yankees, uh, top of the seventh. Man on, no out. Cabrera, uh, who that? No. Yeah, Cabrera is up. I think the other day he hit a home run, if I'm not mistaken. Kid is nice. He's 0 for 2 today. So the Rangers have the Pittsburgh Penguins on Monday at 7 o'clock. I think Johnny, if he's feeling good, he's going to be on. That's good. Eddie Betts. That's who it is. Thank you, Bob. It was Eddie. Yo, his highlight reel is amazing. That, yo, that dude was hitting, kicking and this and that. I, once again, I don't, I don't know the, all the, all the turns because I'm still new to this, but that man was amazing. And, I forgot who sent it to me. And I was like, yo, I like this dude. This dude's, you know, dude's doing his thing. Next thing I know, you guys tell me he's very tight. <laughs> the joke's on me because I'm like, oh, Eddie Betts, oh, he's awesome. He's going to be great. And then I forgot who it was. They were like, yeah, he's not here no more. And he's not here no more. And I'm like, oh, damn. But I did choose the Crows because when I looked at, you know, looked at the 11th man team, I said, so many people like this team. So many people like this other team. No one likes the Crows. I mean, you know, let me go with the Crows. And next thing I know, before the season happens, oh, that was a home run. There you go. Didn't I tell you who did that yesterday? 
Oh, two days ago? Oh, there we go. The Yankees tied it up. The Yankees tied it up. Cabrera, two-run home run. Oh, his second, like I said, I knew I wasn't lying. Hit a home run his first first game. It's another one to tie it up top of the seventh. Wow. The Yankees, look, I'm a Mets fan, and I'm going to be here. And uh, train, if you're here, I don't know if you left already because, you know, I know my – my um. My broadcasting skills, like, it's not like Donnie Basin. So I do apologize, but let me tell you this. That Yankee lineup is crazy. There's only one other team that I can say has a better lineup, and that's the Dodgers, because at the end of the day, ain't nobody has a better lineup than the Dodgers. But that Yankee lineup, all the way from 1 to 9 and 1 to 10, is dangerous. Think about it. You had John Paul Stanton. That even if he had a lot of couple of bad years because of um, injuries, is a monster. A monster. You have Judge that is probably one of the greatest hitters that we've seen the last 10 to 15 years easily. Maybe even 20 years. Um, who else? Uh, Soto. People forget about Soto. I know Soto had a, you know, <laughs> he had a decent season. I'm not, not, not going to say decent season with, uh, with San Diego because he, he hit like 30 or 33 home runs. Batted 270 last year. But that man's eye, yo, so does, yo, he gets walks and he walks and he walks. You can't strike that dude out. Strikeout is really, really low. And then you have Rizzo. Who else did they pick up? They picked up somebody else that was really good too. And that's why I can't stand the Yankees. I'm not gonna lie. And the reason why I can't stand the Yankees and um uh uh, St. Louis, San Francisco, um, even Houston. Uh, who else is another team that I can't stand? There's certain teams that no matter if they're, they're supposed to be in a rebuild state or stage, that they oh Atlanta. How can I forget about Atlanta? You know how many times when Atlanta won the championship like two or three years ago. Their best player blew his knee out. They bought a three, not one, three rookies or one rookie, and they had made two trades for te- people that no one even knew who they were. And they won the chip. So they don't miss. Pittsburgh Steelers, they don't miss. Thompson or – that's his name, Thompson, right? That's, uh, doesn't have a losing season. So there's certain – uh, franchises, they just don't miss. St. Louis is definitely one of them. Atlanta is one of them. The Yankees, one of them. Um, LA has, you know, up and down season for the last like five years. LA has been there. Oh, I can't stand them. Yeah. The Yankees, I, I, as long as, uh, was it Cole? Cole, matter of fact, Cole got hurt. Um, he has, um, he has uh, some kind of nerve ending in his elbow, which they don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, but do I think the Yankees are not going to still be contenders? Their records show that they are. Unlike the Mets, that every time we pick somebody up, we either pick them up late in the, uh, them coming down off their best season or declining, which we do all the damn time. Oh. And then there was a there was a quote that said, "Why don't the Mets bring up some of these young players or these young talents that we have in in the minor leagues?" And somebody was like, "Oh, but well, you know, you need to let them develop." And one of the comments said, "Why is it that other teams? Oh, he got picked up at first base. Oh, come on, how you get picked up at first base like that? That was a good move. What a good move. I don't know if you guys are watching the Yankee game, but that was a good move." How you get picked up at first base? That's like um, that is so bad. That's like your team has a rally going on, and you get picked off. Not good. Not good at all.
Not good. Not good. Definitely not good. Oh, and here we go. Oh, here goes the home run. The Yankees take the lead, but if the other guy didn't get picked up at first base, it would have been a two-run lead. Oh, I can't stand the Yankees. Oh, what a what a oh my lord. Juan Soto, here we go. Like I said, that man is a beast. He is a beast. He's a beast. Let me tell you about that dude right there. That dude is what, 22, 23 years old? If I, I think 22, if I'm not mistaken. 22 years old was probably the only player to make three to four, I think it was three all-star games, three to four all-star games, and get traded twice before the age of 22. So that tells you how good he is. Oh, he's a monster. I can't stand that dude. And we, we, we were after him. We were after, I thought we were going to get him. And here come the Yankees in the 11th hour, swoop in and give uh, San Diego a bunch of nothing. A bunch of nothing for him. They ain't get nothing for him. Yo, Juan Soto's eye is amazing. Amazing. I do, do any of you guys watch MMA or boxing by any chance? I know John doesn't watch boxing or MMA. Um, I'm a big MMA uh, fan. I love boxing. I've been watching boxing since the early or mid-90s. Um, but damn, I can't. Um, the Yankees don't miss. I hate to say it. I'm a Mets fan. The Yankees don't miss. They don't. They don't miss. They got a uh, friend Martin. They call him the Martian. They gave the kid four million dollars or two million dollars. Look at a Google if you don't believe me. They gave that dude like two or four million dollars coming out of the Dominican Republic at the age of like fourteen or sixteen. He came up last year. His first two games had like two home runs. Something so ridiculous. They don't miss. But here comes the Mets. We had Lassie's Millage. That was his name, right? Lassie's Millage. Dude was supposed to be the next up and coming guy, and his ego killed him. At one point, we had the big three. I think it was um, name him for me, but uh, Doughboy. Um, oh, what was the name of those speaking three pictures? Oh, no, no. Back in the days when we we were supposed to have the big three before uh before Batman and them. No, no, before that, way before that, way before that. We had uh we had these young talents that we had that were that was supposed to be the next um uh one of them became a closer for St. Louis. It was three of them. It was like I don't know, we had three pitches that we were supposed to like, oh, these are the next three coming up in stars. We don't want to trade them. It doesn't matter who you who you want, you're not gonna get them. And none of them did nothing. And then here we had the Gron, we had um we had Thor, we had Wheeler, um and don't get me wrong, the Grom is is gonna go down as one of the best pitches of that time frame. I'm not gonna say of all time, but of that time frame. For that moment, exactly. And nothing. He got hurt. The other guy got hurt. Wheeler got hurt. Wheeler comes back as a decent year with us. We don't offer him nothing. Goes to freaking Philly and kills it. And Philly was like, yo, not only we're not only we're gonna do this for you, but we're gonna give you X amount of money. So it's like, are we cursed? I don't want to use the word cursed. I hate to use the word cursed, but I think either at the time, Omar Manaya was our general manager. Um, either bad moves, bad trade, and and I hate to say this, but I'm going to say this. There's no way in the world that you're in the biggest market in baseball, or actually biggest market in the world, because New York, not to, not to be biased, but the biggest market in the world, and you keep on missing and missing and missing. We picked up... Uh, uh, Alberto uh, Alomar, 
they didn't do nothing for us. We picked up Pedro Martinez, was hanging in the front, had a couple of decent years with us. Uh, Jeremy Burnett, Mo Vaughn, um, who else that we picked up that we were supposed to be like, all oh, these guys. Stats for this was, was one of the only ones that I can tell you that came in and made an impact right away. But then the next couple of years was riding pigs and horses and everything else. Had two bro- uh, bone spurts in his ankles. Left him. Didn't do nothing. Uh, I'm trying to think of other big time names. Give me a couple of other names that you remember. Big time name plays that we picked up that they didn't do crap with us. Gary Sheffield. No, the Mets? Oh, my. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Second baseman, what was his name? Um, Robinson, right? Um, Robinson Cano picked him up. Get caught, gets caught with steroids. So when I tell you the Mets have the baddest luck of any team, the Mets have the baddest luck of any team. We have other, like I said, St. Louis, San Diego, um, even even throwing um the Tampa Bay Rays, all these teams, all, the Braves. Bring up these young players or trade for these big time name oh. players, and they hit the mess. We get them at the end of their career, and it's keep it going, Lou, keep it going. Oh, Johnny, come help me, please, come help me. I've been, I've been talking crap the whole time. I keep don't even going. know what I'm doing. Keep going. <laughs> That's it. Keep, Frank Viola. keep going. Oh, Frank Viola. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run him out in ten minutes. Uh, oh no, I'll tell you this. Johan, oh, Brett Saberhagen. Johan Santana did his thing. Johan Santana did his thing. I'm not going to lie. He got his first, well, he got the first Mets no-hitter ever. It was controversial, but we'll take it. We'll take anything that we want. But, man, let me tell you, we have been the the laughing stock of baseball for the last 20 years, though, boy. You want to say that? 30 years, oh, look, my roommate's saying, I'm saying 20, he said 30 years. So in 30 years, we have the biggest market, the Wolf Flow. I don't know if you, Jason Bay. Oh my Lord, that was horrible. Oh my God. Uh, no, okay, one one trade or sign that we did, we had Troy Olerwu. Right, his name for Olu, John Olu. Smart, excuse me, it's killing me right now. But anyway, John Olu. Not gonna lie, the dude killed it. We had Bell from Pittsburgh. We got him from Pittsburgh. That year, he was going all probably one of his best years ever, and blew his freaking Achilles out. Getting a a routine fly pop up, and right before the playoffs, we he was hot. We were hot, and. Here, there goes his Achilles. Killed us. So for me, I'm not saying we cursed, but oh damn, we are cursed. You got uh, we had the Braves for 18 years. I might be wrong, but I'm, I'm gonna say 18 years that won the division in a row. When they had they put up Andrew Jones. In the middle of the World Series, was it the World Series? In the World Series, or in the playoffs? But I think it was—I think it was the World Series against the Yankees or something like that. Or whoever they were playing, the dude killed it. They bring up Chipper Joe. They bring up—I hate to say this guy's name—Rocker, their freaking uh, relief pitcher that was a fucking racist. Excuse my language. I don't curse like that, but I'm gonna say it. I'm sorry. He was still killing it. They had um. Akura, they bring up uh, Azuma. They, uh, they, yo, they just keep. They don't miss. They don't miss. They don't miss. And every single year, we throw money at the fire and we get nothing, nothing. Oh, you want to tell me Agbiani was good? Um, oh, uh, what's his? What's the catcher that left on? Left us, um, Darno. Couldn't hit 20 with us. Couldn't hit 220 with the Beacon Mets. Leaves gets signed by the Braves. His first year was an all-star. 
killed it. That was the reason why they won the World Series that year. It was him. Not with us, but with them. Um, Jeff Kent was with us. Didn't do nothing with us. Goes to um, San Francisco, becomes a freaking all-star every single year. What's the dude that went to um to Los Angeles with the beard, the, the, the ginger guy? Oh, what's his name? Oh, I forgot his name. We were trying to get him back, but we didn't get him back. Um, So many players come to us, start with us, leave, and become all-stars. Um, Even Dwight Gooding, that was Strawberry. They leave us. I mean, they won their chip that year. Yeah, one goes to L.A., the other one, I forgot what the other one goes to. And then they go to the Yankees and win championships. Sorry, we, we just have either we have the baddest luck or we have the baddest general manager, Lance Johnson, OMG. Um, what was the other guy that we had? Um, uh, JD something or JT Drew. We pick we, we end up spending twenty million dollars or forty million dollars on this guy, our third baseman. Jason Bay. Jason, no, 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 not Jason Bay. It was like JT or JD something. Uh, we end up oh, picking him up. Davis. JT David, JD Davis. You sure it wasn't Davis? No, no, Davis was the one that picked up the slack. It was who else was um oh who was it Gordito um oh. Yeah. How long are you talking low, about? Low, 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 or um, something low. How long ago are you Jet talking Lowry. about? Jet Lowry. Who? Something Lowry. Yeah. Jet Lowry for the Mets. We spent $40 million on this dude to play third base. Two games of spring training blew, blows his knee out. When was this? I don't remember. This was a couple of years ago. That's when JT Davis came out. He took he took over. Who and was then. The- Go ahead, keep going. I'm listening. And then the next season, when he's supposed to be healthy, comes back and gets hurt again in spring training. Yo, we spent forty million dollars on this dude that did not play one game in the MLB. Like, like I was telling, I was telling the guys, St. Louis, um, oh no, St. Louis, the Braves, San Francisco, the Yankees. The Dodgers, um, a couple of other teams, or even I, I'm even gonna say Tampa Bay. They bring up young talent. They don't miss. They don't miss. Remember the year that um um, um the Braves won. Akura broke blew his blew his knee out. Oh yeah, blew his knee out. They end up signing two players. That, they bring somebody up from the minor leagues, and they win the championship. They don't miss. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers don't miss. They don't miss. Um, they don't miss. They, they the don't quarterback miss. situation this year is going to be interesting. You start Fields or Russell Wilson. Oh, let me tell you this. Fields is a monster. I he's think, a I, monster. I think, I'm going to tell you why he's a monster. He, uh, I had him last, uh, two years ago. Or last year or two years ago. He had 125 yards in the first quarter, and they still lost the game. Sometimes you it's, play it's not, for a New York team. <laughs> it's not where you go, it's where you end up. Right. Hey, listen, I've been telling people for a minute. People laugh at this, but I'm telling you, Zach has shown signs if he had the right coaching, he might be all right. His first two yeah. years. Now, if he was mature like he was this year, the first two years, people are talking about the raw deal that he's getting. He needs to leave New York, but I still feel like like he had games against Kansas City, showed signs. They had no offensive line. They gave up 64 sacks this year. And by the way, just off topic for a hot second, I leave and I come back. The Yankees are up four to three. Maybe I should not watch oh. because every time oh, I no, you, you don't even know what's going on because I think it was uh I can't I, I forgot the name. It starts with a P. Anyway, I said, yo, he had a home run in his first game. The dude gets caught on you know, gets picked off at first base. How you get picked off at first base? Ooh. And then the next pitch, I forgot who it was. Next pitch, Bond. I'm, I was like, yo, this guy came in, first game. 
you know, they were talking about him, how good he's been. He's changing his, his uh, batting stands and and next thing, home run. But, oh, uh, you know, Johnny. Volpe just hit a home run. I know you're you're a Jets fan, so you can, you can be a testament to this. Why do every other team hit on free agency, drafting, and everything else? And then the Jets and the Mets, we suffer. We always said that at baseball season, you just replace the J with the M, depending on the season, because it's true. I don't know. The Jets cannot. I mean, when people critique, like I always said, the Geno Smith thing is ridiculous because it's nine years later. But the point remains, they don't develop quarterbacks. I don't know why they don't. They've had two. Do you know this? And do you know who they are? The Jets drafted two quarterbacks in their history. There's only two drafted that had a winning record. Oh, the kid from uh, the kid from uh, you uh, the kid from California. Um, am I wrong with that, California? California, uh, U- 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 UFC. Yeah, who? Well, come on. What's his name? I, I can't. Oh, hold Mark on. Sanchez. It wasn't Wilson. Oh no, no, that, no. We're both chances. He has a winning Mark record. Sanchez. There's one other guy. The buff fumble. We never forget the buff fumble. The other guy might have been from the same school. No. No. Um. There's only two. What is Zach Wilson? Who was the one before Zach Wilson that they thought he was the truth to? Um. Oh, they had Sam Darnold, but no, he didn't have a winning record. That's who you were thinking of. They didn't. Sam Darnold didn't have a winning record because he had what, like eight different offensive coordinators. Or oh yeah, he had Adam Gates, the quarterback. He had, no, he had no. He had nothing. So yeah, Adam Gates, the whisperer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about Whisperer, Adam Gase? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bring it back to the Whisperer because you laugh. We both laughed at that. They need, um, they need a Peyton Manning. The Jets? No, no, the, the, the Whisperer. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you and I could have been the Whisperer on the Broncos. I mean, he was already established. Exactly. So how can you be the Whisperer when the dude is, is – is you can't miss on that dude. There's nothing – even so, if you call it six different, different – Six bad plays out of seven. Hey, man, going to be like, oh, no, I'm going to pick the center because those six of you gave me were garbage. Oh, man. Dude, and by the way, the other quarterback was Chad Pennington. I love Chad. What yeah, happened with I love Chad, Chad, too, but he got a what shoulder. Happened with Chad, what happened with – no, 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 wait. And, and once again, I'm not the greatest – I don't – my memory doesn't work as good as you do because, yo, you are a sports almanac. He oh. came in, got hurt. Something happened with his, with his shoulder. Came in again, put a touchdown, and broke his shoulder even worse than what, what happened. They like two plays before. Am I yeah, right? Then they, then they get rid of him, and he had comeback player of the year for Miami. And then, <laughs> and then he beats the Jets in the last game of the year to knock him out of the playoffs. That's just you know, he, Okay. He didn't have the strongest arm out of any quarterback that we've ever seen. Yo, Ducks. He was throwing Ducks. Let's be honest, throwing ducks, but those ducks were accurate. They were like, I mean, completion wise, he was third all time up until I know he's moved down a little bit since then, but yeah. I mean, Barcells was the one that drafted him. People say he doesn't have an arm. He's like, he doesn't need an arm. You know who else didn't have? I mean, I am not comparing the two. Joe Montana didn't have an arm. You know, Joe Montana was asked recently about who the greatest quarterback of all time is. He's like, you forget. He said, forget about rings. He's like, who didn't want to be Dan Marino? He said, I wasn't a quarterback like Dan Marino. Dan Marino. So a lot of them said that. Brett Favre, Aikman. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, yeah. I remember when um, Joe Montana was playing, free agency wasn't the biggest thing. Who? What? I mean, it, the free agency wasn't the biggest oh, thing. Oh, free agency, yeah. So his team – for. Eight years in a row was the same team. You had Ronnie Lott playing defense. You had uh, Jerry Rice. You had, uh, I can't remember the freaking tight end. The tight end was good too. Some white boy that was humongous. Um, But he just, he was the first game manager before the game manager was the game manager. John, Um, yeah, John Taylor. Yeah, uh, yeah, Taylor, Taylor, oh my God. 
Roger Craig, running back. Roger Craig that cut his finger off. You know what I'm saying? Just to play in the in the, in the Super Bowl. Ronnie Come Lott, on, man. Like, no, no, excuse me. That was Ronnie Lott. It's still at all. It's, it's the point. It's the point. It's just right. the whole players wouldn't um, do that now. No, no, it wasn't even that. It was just the, the whole free agency wasn't. He said he didn't want a ring standing on the sideline. Can you imagine that? So he what had was the bigger amputated trade? so he wouldn't miss any games. What was the greatest trade in football history? Football history? History. I got mine. So I'm, I'm going to tell you mine. And if you want me to tell you mine before you say yours. Oh, go I'll ahead. Tell, tell me. I got a few. First you walk them. Herschel Walker for Dallas. They got 60 Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the overall trade, yeah. For, for the overall trade, and everybody was like, yo, Dallas, are you stupid? Are you crazy? Whatever, whatever. Right, yo, right. they broke, yo, they broke down every single play that they got for that man, or how they got every single play for that man was astronomical. Like, it wouldn't happen, it wouldn't happen now. But they were like, we're going to trade this person for that person. We're going to trade that person for six people. Six people, we're going to trade two out of those for another three, four, four people. Yo, that's why the Dallas dynasty is the Dallas dynasty is because of Herschel Walker. It's because of Herschel Walker. It's because of Herschel Walker. You're right. And think about it because so, their first year after that trade, I think they went one in 15. With Trey Eggman? Trey Eggman, Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin. I mean, like – it's insane because you know what I always said the Jets got all that. They all have been hurt their first year. They uh oh, no, so that is to, that has to be on. for the results. It has okay. to be the greatest trade. I can uh, see that, that was my next question was do you think that was the best one that I'm just mentioning? For the results wise, yeah, because it didn't work out well for Minnesota. <laughs> it, oh, didn't. it didn't work out for anybody else to trade anybody in Dallas. Oh. I remember no. uh, Mike Dickey traded away his whole draft to get Ricky Wilson so he can get Ricky Williams and Oh, Ricky Williams, the uh, pothead. And you know what? No. And let me see away his whole dude. draft. Uh -oh. Let me that dude. uh oh. Woo! I thought that was gone. Soto got that on the wall, huh? Ricky Williams was um what's his name? Oh, hold on. Dan Shane never won. Oh, Dan Marino, yeah. No, 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 no. Bruin, yeah, no, no. it's Dan Shane. I'm, 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 I'm going left. I'm going left with this. He was the Jose Canseco of baseball. Uh, oh. So, Ricky Williams. Oh. Ricky Williams got, he got, remember, he got suspended multiple times for smoking weed. Oh, yeah. And he goes, and he goes, I'm not going to quote it, but I'm trying to paraphrase it. He goes, I don't want to take these pills or these shots that these people are giving me to treat my injury. I better smoke weed because it makes me feel better. It makes me whatever, whatever. And everybody was like, oh, you're a drug addict. You're this. But no one thought about the Adderall or um, what was the other shot that they give people? Um, um, Epidermal. There's a shot that they give you. No, 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 no. There's a shot that they give you that when, you know, you have something wrong with your muscle or your, or your knee. It's called oh, um, uh, cortisone. 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 Or Percocet or Oxycontin that, you know, people were like, oh, no, no, just take these pills because the doctor said it was good. Ricky would have said, I don't want to take none of that. I know what it was going to do to my body. And everybody laughed at him. Just like everybody laughed at freaking Jose Canseco. Oh, no, no, you don't know what you're talking about. And then now, let's just hindsight, 20 years later, Ricky Williams is right. He goes, yo, I didn't want to take these put own shots or anything because it was bad for my body. I didn't want to take it. It was addictive but I could smoke a little bit of weed and I'm good. And people laughed at Ricky Williams. Remember, he got blackballed. He, he got retired. Blackballed. He nobody, retired. Yes. For a minute. You know what he, he was a great to, running know? back, but he just, he was kind of like, to me, like Rodman, like I can be great. I can be even greater than the great I am, but I he didn't want to put an effort all the time. I disagree with that, Johnny. And, I, and, and when I tell you this, when I tell you I disagree with you, Johnny, it has to be that I believe what I stand on because when, you, when I disagree with you, you usually would tell me, and you pull out facts, pom, 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 and I'm like, Yo, Johnny, you're right. But I promise you, Ricky Williams got blackballed because he was the first athlete to say, I'd rather smoke weed than say cortisone. I'd rather take weed than say... Oh, no, you're right. He I, openly I, I, said I, it. He never denied it. Yes. Besides, no, he, he, was, test, I mean, he never denied it. He said, this is what I do. After, after the same, uh, uh, after the same, he went to uh, uh, 
the Dolphins or vice versa. Nobody wanted to do it. And then the Dolphins, yeah. And then he was like, yeah, right. he, smoke- didn't deny it. He, he didn't even say he wanted to try to fight it or stop it because this is what he did. No, 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 you're right. But So now, 20 years later, 20 years later, we're finding out that that Coderone shot that you're putting in your knee is blowing your knee out. You're, it, it, yeah, it numbs your knee, but now that you're playing on it, it's ripping it up even more. As far you, as I understand, it's, it's a steroid. It's a form of a steroid. Yes. Like, well, yeah. Once again, so Ricky Williams was such ahead of his time that we didn't understand what he was saying. And sometimes when we don't understand what people are saying, we're scared of it. And then we're like, oh, no, that's not what the, that's not what the media tells me. That's not what the doctors tell me. And I promise you, I'm not trying to be political or anything like that. But Ricky Williams was ahead of his time, and so was what was I going to say? Jose Canseco, because he was the first one to say, "Yo, eighty percent of these players are on steroids," and everybody laughed at him. Wasn't the first one though? Maybe not the first one, but I know he was the first one that really blew it up. Well, yeah, he really blew it up, and I think it's to try to save his own face too, because he just figured oh, he really went no, down. Please. But do you remember who the first one was? He was actually a good player. It's not somebody you would never hear of. But he's the first one to actually bring it up. If there was somebody before him, I sure as hell don't know. Dude, Oswaldo Oswaldo Cabrera hit a... That's him. That's him. Hold on. This kid has been playing. Because he was... He had a home run in the first game, right? They hit home run in the first game. Yesterday had two key hits to bring in runs, and now I just saw... Did he have two home runs today? No, no. He hit a home run yesterday on the first game. And they hit a home run today. Because they're up five to three. I need to show anyway. Uh oh no, you I'll, I'll tell you because I don't I'll oh, tell man. you who it is. I don't think you'll get it. Not because you're not capable oh, of not. No, 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 no. I'm it's, not gonna get it, Johnny. I'm sorry. It's Ken Caminiti. Oh remember Ken Caminiti? Yes, one. I know he was the what? First one. You know what? This this thing that is promoted, and no, I I, I hear what you say. You actually made a really good point, man. I could uh I, I, what do you think it is spring football? I just can't get into it, man. I, I can't. I tried last year. I actually tried some game. I just can't because to me, this is NBA, NHL playoff time. Baseball's back, and I'm just not. I don't. I don't watch a GD. Um, the other day when uh, did he? Oh, sorry. Hold on. He Austin Matthews got. Can you see what his his comment is? Bruin, part of it's cut out on mine. Austin Matthews, first American. 70 goals? Mm-hmm. 60 goals. 60. 60. Wow, man. Austin Mads has been killing it, man. I was wondering if he's going to get – he could get 70. There's enough time left. Could get 70. Anyway, uh, yeah, this kid Oswaldo Cabrera can play every position. And he had an oh. off year last year. And I don't know why, because he even said he was so angry at himself. He had a real off year. But now, he just comes think out of the I think when you're, you're coming to a new team, especially this, um, that's what I was trying to mention gone. before, you, uh, you come to this big market, you always try to overdo it. Well, and... the first year he was good, but I think a lot was expected of him last year. I think he overdid it. Well, he keep overdid going. it. And same thing, like I was saying with Soto. I think Soto's going to be awesome with the Yankees because he played in Washington. Washington is Philly, New York. So you're all always in the media. So for him, he's been there. And then he went to San Diego. With San Diego, L.A., he went to another big media team. So for him, it doesn't matter. And I also for somebody, think somebody, for a minute, I also think with Soto, he just he just plays the game. For some reason, he never yeah. looks like he's under any pressure. He doesn't no. really run his mouth. He just has that funny thing when guys throw a ball and he does that lean in. I think it's hilarious. I, no, I used to hate it, but I love it now. You know why? Because now I understand that he's like, yo, you're throwing me muck? I You're throwing me muck? I and He now does it in the MLB he, game, too. It's hilarious. Yes. Don't boy say he wants to play in the MLB game. That's cool, man. That's cool. Xbox? Xbox? Yeah. I mean, we can okay. play. Don't boy. Xbox, don't boy. Right? I don't do play creations. Hold on, Johnny. Don't don't get mad at me. Johnny says he's gonna beat the whipping daylights out of you because he's been undefeated for six years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm starting this rivalry now. I'm gonna start the rivalry. So Doughboy said to you because he hasn't 
He didn't say nothing, but he's going to tell you, Johnny, bring it. He ain't scared of you. Do what you want. Bring the Yankees. He's going to bring the match, and it's over. At least he knows it's over. No, he ain't over for you. <laughs> I'm <laughs> laughing right now. <laughs> no doubt, Bruin. No doubt. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty uh, good at baseball, man. I'm pretty good at Oh, baseball. man, let me tell uh, you, man. It's just... Well, the uh, – so what happened? I mean, well, you're probably on a roll, but the Yankees were – No, about... no, no. Okay, so what happened was oh, the Yankees – Oh, it was the era. They, they, they play that guy once in a while, Emerson Piera or P- – uh, you're talking about a player with a P that got picked off? That was the one that got picked off, but the next person, the one that hit the home, uh, hit the home run early and did the home run again. And he hit a home run. He They hit a home run in, in um, the first game of the season. I missed game one. Remember, I was uh, – uh, uh, I missed game one. It was 4 They were down four. They were That's down what four I was having a problem with that, the MLB yeah. network thing, So I, and I ended up just missing it. So <laughs> – no, no, you missed it because you didn't put everything correct because I gave it to you for the last six, seven years. Always, I never changed it. And I you said, oh, such a problem I, with no, that. You said, you said, no, no, you said, oh, I just um updated it and it works. I was like, come on, Johnny, I'm giving you. It has yeah, that I like sat there, was watching four games. I'm like, I don't want to watch four games. I want to watch one. I've never been the fan that can watch, have multiple screens and watch all these games. I like to watch one game. That's it. I'm going to tell our fans this, Freeman. or your fans, or the basement dwellers. The only person that I will ever give my login to my MLB has always been Johnny Effing Basement since day one. And I've always told them this. You're trucking, because you started trucking at the time. And this is how much love I got for you, brother. I promise you, I'm not staying there for cloud or anything like that, because I ain't getting no cloud here. But I told you, the only person that I'm going to give my sign into is you because I want you, when you're on the road, whenever, wherever you are at, in, in the United States. Oh, it's everywhere. Utah, Colorado, Texas, this one, oh, Houston, man. everything. Else. And the funny thing is, yo, John used to send me pictures of, of, uh, of, of, uh, uh, what was I, that thing that you, uh, so, so many animals that you used to send me. Uh, 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 like ostriches and this and that. And oh things. yeah, emus. Uh, uh, uh road runners. A road runner came exactly. up. Exactly. And, was and I've always said this to you, Johnny. The only person I will ever give my MLB ticket sign into is you. Not only because of that, is you the only person that I know that loves baseball more than I do. Besides my roommate, Bill Boy. I love baseball, yeah. hockey, football, basketball. Like I know that. you do. I know you do, my brother. Football started when to piss me off with their rule changes. I'm going to tell you that. And when you told me the other day, you were like, yo, Lou, what's the sign? And I said, it's the same sign, and I haven't changed it. And I sent it to you, and you were like, I can't get in. I can't get in. I said, hold on, let me check. Let me make sure that it's still the same thing. And then you go, oh, I updated it. It's working. That's what I know, Johnny. I would never change it for you. My man, let me tell you this. When it comes to sports, I appreciate it. I so don't, no, 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 no. Not that I, I know you appreciate it, and that's the reason why I do it. I don't know anybody else that has loved every single sport. Look at our Aussies. Look at our Aussies. I've never looked at the AFL ever in my life, ever. Okay. Even thought about looking at it, and you started doing it. You started Story doing game. it, and you yeah. started doing it. And no, no, and now I appreciate it. Look, I'm I'm in a, I'm in a fantasy AFL league. You know what I'm saying? Those like, guys kick a football down, feel like a like an NFL quarterback throws a pass, and it connects. It's amazing. It is and, amazing. And on I top love of that, that if you go talk crap to me, and I'm gonna talk crap to you, just like hockey, we're gonna fight. Unlike NFL, MLB, or uh, the NBA, we gonna fight. And and in the Aussie league, they fight. You know, they yeah. push. They do. They no. We're gonna police ourselves. And I know and you I, love the. Uh, I know. Uh, hold on a second. I know you love the. Uh, the specky. You can climb up on an opponent's back and catch that oh, ball. I thought, I thought it was called the ladder. It was the specky. Yes. They 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 in the NFL they throw five hundred flags. You'd be freaking banned for life. You can imagine that. You could. You can Dude, do that, man. You, like, can, you, you can put your cleat on top of someone's waist, shoulder. They put their knees the on their shoulders. And, 
Like, bro, that's what's really sold me on the sport. I was like, what? Yo, the you can do this? Yo, you can put your first step on someone's waist, someone's shoulder, and someone's head to catch the ball. And it's not even a penalty. And yo, I, and they don't even get up. They don't even get up arguing. You see how quick their reviews are too. Boom, boom, over. In the NFL, it's five hundred videos. Let's go back. Let's check with this. In in footy, it's boom. It's and it's kind of like if someone gets injured, if it's not near the play, they keep playing. Like it, I love it. It's a great game. Man. Oh man, let me tell you, it's it's, it's an amazing sport. It's, it's a sport I didn't know existed. Well, let me not say I didn't know it existed. I just saw it and just kept on passing it by, scrolling by. But now that, like I told the, the 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 Aussies, thank you for sending me videos on grand championships, this, that. Yo, from 96, oh, 86, 88, 89, uh, 2000 something. I can't remember all of them. But yo, they were amazing. Like, incredible, these, man. These, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Even and, and now in, in basketball, you touched me and it's like, shoot, foul. Now you have to go back and look at flagrant fouls. What do you mean you have to look at the? Oh, yeah, you drive the lane, you get the down. foul, even if it's clean. It's it's just insane, man. But now they, they have to. Remember when Mason or Oakley will give somebody an elbow to the face when they're trying to get to the freaking lane, and it was like, oh, two fouls, oh, two feet throws. Excuse me, two feet throws. Um, uh, morning. Uh, who else was a, was a was a monster? Grandmama. Um. Oh, who's the other one? Um, Larry Johnson was great. Yeah, Larry Johnson, yeah, Larry Johnson was was crazy. But so many other players that out of the nights, like, Yo, you're not coming into this lane without getting an elbow if you score oh, twenty points on me. Yeah, Dale Davis and Tony. The Pacers always get overlooked with the monsters they had in the in the paint, man. The Duncan Dale Davis, Smith, Antonio Davis, Smith. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, who else Mike was Smith it? Uh, there. uh, Ron Artest was there. A young Ron, Ron Artest. Oh no, Ron yeah. Artest was at a different yeah. level. Jackson was another one that was on a different level. It's but now it's like, oh, later on that Pacers team was big. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, he grabbed his shoulder. Let's look at his defeated foul one or two. What you mean? He just grabbed his shoulder. But whatever. Oh, but, strike. Uh, Come on, man. Let's go. I just want to see this bomb tonight that I'm out of here, man. <laughs> this, yo, this AFL. I carried Johnny. it, man. Apparently, I didn't even watch. I guarantee you carried it in here, man. How'd you do? How'd you feel during that half hour? That was great. I have no idea. I was lost. No, you weren't. You just kept no, doing it. I was. I was lost. I didn't know. Funny because I, I, just... I told Rock, <laughs> we're going to hand it, handed him the keys. Handed him the keys. Went to the yeah. store, got a dinner. Hey, man. Yo, Johnny. I said, I'm sorry if you guys. I said, I'm sorry. I said, sorry if you guys are used to Johnny. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to talk. And I just kept on rambling and rambling and rambling. Who's going yeah, to the chat? Talk? Guys, help you. Who talks? Who uh, talks? I talked. I was not hanging up for Johnny. It was scary. It was scary. I promise you. I know. It don't mean nothing, but it was scary to me because I'm like, hey, when I first started doing you know this it. thing, I didn't. I mean, I had Rick the Ninja in here, man, when I first started doing it. I didn't oh, know. Yeah, but you know what? You just start talking Thank about you. what you know. Well, Thank you're, it's going to happen you. again. It's going to happen again. I know. <laughs> I'll you be don't care anymore, time. man. You just talk about the latest, you know, whatever. And here, it doesn't I'll matter if it's ready. Rangers versus Coyotes. You could do Knicks and, and baseball and the latest talk. Like, and like, like, and whatever. like, got, like you know, says, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. <laughs> Hey, well, Rock, I was hungry. Yeah, I, Rock in the basement, man. She was hungry. And I, I'll talk. I'll talk out. all day. One more out to go. Let's go. But, Johnny, the Knicks look good. The Rangers look good. Um, at the end of the day, that's, you know, right now, I know we, we're watching baseball, but the Rangers look amazing. They don't feel like any other team that we've seen before. The Knicks don't no. feel like any team that we ever seen before. So, come on. And the Knicks, with all those injuries, still help. That's why, listen, I know, oh, come on, he hit him. Don't see this the type of thing here. He just hit him. He just hit Pena. Now watch a two-run homer happen. Two outs. Just hit Pena. Now, you know he didn't do it on purpose. The uh, you know, the, other day, the other day we had five Knicks uh, players that me and my roommate, Doughboy, they didn't even know who they were. They uh, didn't even know who they were. When, uh, who, they, who they were beating, uh, Doughboy. 
when when the Knicks had the the, the whole entire well uh the other team that we didn't know what 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 was the player it was like two games ago. I don't know. They had players that I've never seen. They had a a shooting guard that we didn't see. There was a forward that we never seen. Toronto. On the Knicks? No, on the Knicks, yeah, when we played Toronto. Well, excuse me, when we blew out Toronto, there was players on that team that – Oh, that I missed got, that game. I didn't want to miss it, but oh, I missed that game. Go back and watch it, Johnny. I promise you, the fourth quarter, you're going to see people – so We blew out like 145 to something, right? Like, they didn't win by no, like you're going to see months. players that you've never heard of. Because once again, I watched every single Nick game this year. Every single Nick game. It's I watched, not even last year. I watched a good 90% of them. Come on, that should be it. That should be I it. I promise you, Johnny, go back and watch that game. Just go watch the fourth quarter. You they brought in players that that I've never I can't even pronounce their names. I'll take a look at I'll look at the highlights. I didn't even look at the no, highlights. No, 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 no. Ah. Don't go look at the highlight. Don't go look at the highlight. Go look at the fourth quarter. Oh, this game's over. First three and old start since 2003. Forget about that, Johnny. I'm sorry. Because we're not talking about the Yankees right now. We're still, we're no, no, all I'm Knicks. talking about is going to Houston and all of them thinking, oh, we'll be, we always beat the Yankees. Taking the first three out of four is killing them and on their turf. Johnny, I promise you. Go look at the Toronto game. I will. I we, promise we go you. We're like 30 or four, like 30, almost like 20 or 30 points. Go look at the team that we put in the fourth quarter. I guarantee you, if you can name me five of the four play, or excuse me, four of the five players that were playing in the fourth quarter, I promise you, I'm gonna be like, yo, Johnny, you're the greatest. <laughs> we didn't know, yo, we didn't know who they were, where they came from, and once again, you know, I've been, I've been watching the Rangers all year long, every single game, or well, at least ninety nine percent of the game. The, I probably uh, the don't. Knicks, I mean, I probably won't. I probably won't. Go I'm saying I probably the, won't know them, but I'll take a look. Go look at the fourth quarter. And, yo, they did their thing. That was crazy. So, for me, it's this. I know that losing Randall, losing um um OG, losing um, uh, Robinson was bad. But I think it was good. And in, 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 if you want to look at, you know, half class, full, empty. We had Devin Genzo that came out of nowhere. Hart has set it up. Precious. You said it. I don't know nobody in the speaking war named Precious. I've never He's knew been that. stepping it up. Fuck, yo, go look but at the He was a throw in. He was a throw in. Um, and look at him. He's a, yes, a two. Yes, a throw yes. And look at him. Like go, look at the fourth, go look at the fourth quarter against Toronto. Because I I'm going to tell you. Lou, me and my I will roommate look at the was, fourth quarter versus Toronto. I'll my roommate is a big Nick fan, just like you. And he goes, who in the L is this? Five players that I've never seen before, ever seen before, all season. No, not before. All season was who are these guys? Go look at it, yo. I promise you, Johnny. You're gonna call me tomorrow, and you're gonna be like, "Yo, Lou." Now I understand what you're saying. I've seen ninety-five percent of the Knicks and Ranger games this year, and I know. Well, you missed that one percent. Of Toronto, these guys had to be we... deeper on the bench than than Evan Fournier. They must have been below. No, even worse than him. That's what I'm saying. They were was. deeper on the bench than him. That's pretty low. Dude, if Doughboy tells me who is this guy, that he's been a Knicks fan for how long, Doggedito? Doughboy, how long you been a Knicks fan for? Forever, he said. And he literally didn't even know who these guys were. Trust me, Johnny, you wouldn't even know who these guys were. I believe you. You're passionate enough. I believe you. Behind the bench, on the bench, on the bench, they were the towel boys. Well, oh, Johnny, thank you for giving me you know, 30 minutes today. Of course. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank everybody else. I want to thank my Aussie people. And like I said, look, I'm a pro, at least for this year. Was um, here with guys, awesome. carried you. I'm like, when I left the store, I didn't way even back, turn it on. All these guys, yes, all these guys. Um, Even the tuba train, which I know who he is. Um, Thank you guys for always supporting my boy, John. My boy John is here because he loves you guys. He's here oh, because yeah. he loves this. And he only wants to show and spread love and only wants you guys to come in. So thank you, John, for giving me those 30 minutes. I was scared as shit. I'm not going to say a lot to you. I'm a New Yorker. I'm not going to supposed to say that I'm scared, but I'm just like, I didn't know where to go, but I went. and In the basement. You must get along with the basement, man. That's it. You just Thank you. Let's go Rangers. Let's go Knicks. Let's go Yankees. Let's go Mets.
I didn't even have to watch when I went in the car to the store. I didn't even have to watch you, man. I listened to music, came back, brought rock and food. Oh, I didn't even watch because I trusted. I already knew. I was like, one thing Lou can do is what's your name? Talk. I, I, I felt like I was a freshman in high school again in 1994. I ain't gonna lie to you, The more you do it by yourself, the more the times, the more you'll be completely fine with it, man. That's it. Thank you, Johnny. Everybody have a good night. Go ahead, Johnny. Go. Thanks, off. everybody. Have a great night. Thank you, and thank you for supporting Lou. He's going to be doing that again. We'll be on again at some point during the week. We'll come on a little bit more. Now I know when I need those breaks, Lou's got it. So that's what we are here in the basement. Yes, Shinazi, let's go Rangers and Knicks and Yankees. Yes, sir. The Yankees come back and beat Houston again, Shinazi. Uh, yes, sir. Ma 747, go power, Crows, come on. He said, come on, Crows, go power. Well, we'll get into some footy too, man, at some point. So anyway, guys, we are out of here. Been on here like four hours. That's enough. Rangers win, Yankees win. That's all that matters, and I love it. We're now even the Yankees. Lose. We took the series from Houston in Houston. Even if we lose tomorrow, it don't matter. Happy Easter, everybody. We're out. We'll talk. Hey, Bruin, again, thanks, man. Thanks for uh, keeping in with Lou. Appreciate it, uh, Bruin. Really, guys, that was Lou's first time being on for a long time. Been being on for a long time, so much appreciated to you guys. Uh it means a lot, man, because there's going to be times even with what I'm going through that I can have Lou on here and we can do some back and forths and things like that. So that that's really, really cool. And Bruin and Yankee fans and Schnazzy, Oswaldo Cabrera, looks like we got him back. Looks like we got him back. This kid is playing. Maybe he pushed it too much last year, but this kid's looking good. Oswaldo Cabrera is looking good. I know it's early in the season, but, man, this is a good – look, I'm 7 of 13 – Two homers, six ribbies, three runs, 538 average for the first series of the season. Go Cabrera. Let's go, Cabrera. Bruin, a basement first. Again, brother, thank you. OG Bruin, thank you for supporting Lou and everybody else that did as well that he shouted out all the names already. Much appreciated. Now I'm out of here. I got to find something to eat and call tonight guys i will see you this week not tomorrow have a great easter i will see you guys at some point during the week and we'll do some more games here let's go out of here later